Yeah. It, I tell you what, it does a nice job of smoothing your skin. I mean, you, your face looks yeah. good. Well, I need all unless that's, a, is that, unless that's your camera that you're using. I see you've been stirring it up on TikTok again. <clears throat> I was on there a little bit today and you keep popping up in my for you page. You had yeah. some time to think what today you're arguing tire pressure with some morons about maximum tire pressure. Um, what was the other one? <clears throat> Oh, some guy had a uh, close up of his face and he was threatening you or something. And you said he, you know, your, you, you, your, your opinion doesn't matter. I don't, you remember that dude? Um, kind of old, yeah, that, weird, that scary looking guy, scary looking guy. He's real, he's real close up of his face and he's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, like what you were saying. And you basically told him that, look, buddy, what you <laughs> think uh, doesn't matter. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of those. Uh, <clears throat> well, I turned on. <clears throat> I was. Uh, uh oh. Why do I see? Why do I see? What's his name in our TikTok? Uh, the old dude from up in North uh, North New England. The the liberal old dude. What's his name? Got sitting in the chair with Bernie. his gloves on. Who? Bernie. 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 Why is Bernie in our TikToks? Because I I stitched a thing with when that when that dude what threatened to whoop, um, oh yeah 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 yeah, <clears throat> he was going to whoop uh, uh, Sean O'Brien. Oh yeah, I remember that now. I still uh, wish you could see this. Seriously, see this guy with the big long white mustache and beard and long hair, and he's because you know how the TikTok just gives you the first second and repeats it. This yeah. guy looks like he's praying, you know, in front of the Wailing Wall. You know, I wish you could see that. <laughs> it's funny. <clears throat> Well, I, uh, Restream's allowed us to stream on Instagram. And so I started that. And unfortunately, it was playing in my ear, like delayed 10 seconds, and I couldn't figure out how to turn it off, and I closed the browser. Yeah. But now it's streaming on Instagram, and I can't turn it off because I I, I closed the page with the button to turn it off. So we may yeah. be streaming on Instagram for the next 175 years. So. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll. I, I would not know because I don't have Instagram. So, yeah. Uh, hell, we might be streaming on NASA right now. We know we who knows. Be. We could be. Maybe this. So, hey, we, we, we're, we've already got greetings. Our audio's good. Your audio's good. My audio's good. Go give it a few minutes, okay, Steve? Don't get too excited. Well, so here's here's <clears> what <throat> I've done uh, for you, the people. I've completely you, rewired my office. All right, I've got. I'm running oh, yeah. from from the router. To the computers, I got new wires. I got network switches. I have rewired everything. So, mm -hmm. here's fingers so, crossed. So I'm going not going to look at one look at the American Express bill this month, right? Is that what you're saying? Actually, <clears throat> it was surprisingly cheap, like probably a hundred bucks. Well, that is surprising. A, switch, a bunch of cables it wasn't bad at all. I, I, I love these upgrades that we get. <laughs> hey, so I ordered a uh, a long. Cat five cable, so I can plug up and be hardwired starting next week. So outstanding, that might help. I'm a long way from the router where I am right now, and uh, I've got like I've like five eighty seven down, but I on Wi Fi I'm not getting half of that. Yeah, so I'm going to hardwire to it as starting next week. So <clears throat> with a FLD one twenty T two thousand T six hundred etc. with the Series sixty Detroit ten thirteen speed three fifty five gears would be a good candidate for a lunatic truck. No. Sort of, kind of, <laughs> except for the FLD part. Everything else was fine. Well, here, well, even with the T two thousand and the T six hundred. Yeah, love, that's true. I yeah. love T six hundreds because the the great thing about the T six hundred, especially. Um, when, you know, you had a, there was a bunch of companies back in the late nineties and early two thousands that ran vans with T 600s and they would have the big air dam on top and they would have the full fairings down the side, uh, because the T 600 was developed as an aerodynamic truck. 
<clears throat> right. <clears throat> the the where where the FLD one hundred and twenty, the T two thousand, and the T six hundred are going to fall apart is in practicality, um, parts availability. Uh, the FLD has now been completely out of production since two thousand. Well, the, 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 I think they made the classics up to 07. Um, but those interior parts and door latches and gauges, and they're, they're really, really hard. They're not really, they're harder to come by. The reason that we prefer the C120 platform, the Century Columbia, is they were still building gliders up to 2020, 2021. So all of your dashboards, mm -hmm. all your switches and wiring harnesses and flippers and doodabs, they're all still available and they're super cheap if you get the relationship with the right Freightliner. Now, our local Freightliner, um, Matheny Freightliner, I will, you know, begrudgingly say <clears throat> good things about them is that their their parts prices are generally 30, 40% cheaper than any other dealer that I run into. Um, mm -hmm. uh but the C120, uh, remember that we are in business not to look good, to have a big fat bank account. Um, and the even C120, even though even though we a couple of us do look good, but, you know, right? The C120 is the most efficient to operate truck on the road, uh, yep. and it just it just can't be beat. Um, yeah. And so I mean, that's, it wouldn't be horrible. I mean, it was a lot, lot worse there, but it wouldn't be the ideal truck. If, if we had a 120 sitting next to it, you know, we would choose the 120, you know, for obvious reasons. I saw, I saw an FLD <clears throat> pulling out a TA yesterday and it was gorgeous. Uh, and it was the, it was the full aero package. It, it had the fairings mm -hmm. down the sides, fairings on the back, full condo sleeper. Somebody had put a, I mean, not a million dollar paint job, but they'd put a good paint job on it. I mean, the thing looked brand new, you know, and it was probably a early two thousands model. Uh, I, right, one right. of my one of my good friends runs an uh, an FLD Classic, um, you know, but he's had to fabricate parts for that truck. You know, he had issues with a, a window mechanism, <clears throat> and he and he had to get out his his lathe and start building well, parts for uh, it. You know. You know, you know, Jackie, Jackie Wormsley, you know, she was a CMC, yeah. it's a Landstar, lives up in South Dakota, Wyoming. You know, yes. she had a really, really good FLD and she, same thing, she just couldn't get parts for it. She bought another FLD, I think a little bit newer, just to get the parts off of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So now she's in that one and she's using her old one for parts, but that's the reason she got two trucks and one of them is just for parts. So, but um, she likes it. Yeah, and let's let's remember um, that you when um, when you're trying to operate freight, uh, operate a truck, and go up down a road and haul freight, and and the and the the need arises for a part. I need it now. I don't need it three days from now. I don't need it a week from now. I don't I don't have time to dig around and find it. I need it right now, today. Let's get this truck moving. Let's get back on the road. And again, the great thing with the C120 um, versus the the Cascadias and the T680s and the Peterbilts and all that kind of stuff, these old classics, or I'm sorry, these old uh, centuries in Columbia's, y'all, it's all fuses, relays, switches. There's no $1,000 module that runs the damn headlights, okay? All right. Um, it it is a it is a truck that will hook to a trailer and haul freight and do it reliably and efficiently and that's what we're after we're after reliable and efficient uh phil are there any trucks in the fleet that use def and do we keep up with the mpg well you know damn well we keep up with the M mpg we have two that use def we have a 16 Cascadia, no, a 17 Cascadia and an 18 Cascadia. 17 right? and 18. Yeah. Yeah. yeah correct. Um, <clears throat> uh, and that. Both of them are automatics. And that 17 right now, we just put a $6,500 clutch in it, you know, um, 
and we've got the transmission on the ground again because it's got a split rod bushing, some kind of horseshit nonsense. It's a hundred dollar part, but you got to pull the damn transmission out to get to it. And it's just a little, looks like a push rod in like a V8 engine, but thicker about the size of your th- finger. And that thing moves back and forth and there's a little sensor on the, on the TCM. That thing, well, that, that thing will seize up and, and it wouldn't shift. And uh, so we investigated. We got the transmission out of it now. Um, but again, you know, this these Cascadias, if you take take emissions off the table as a potential problem, um, uh, modules, there's, there's, a, there's a module for every damn thing. There's modules for headlights and there's modules for interior lights and there's modules for this and modules for that. And they're basically computers. And look, I, I love my phones and my iPads and my MacBooks, and I, I love technology, but not when it is t- connected to things that will shut the truck off. Now, I've never experienced this, um, but we've heard stories. I've heard it more than once that like on a T680, a problem with the radio can shut the truck off because it runs through a module. Right. You know, <clears throat> I'm sorry that that is that's, that's impractical and unnecessary. Um, I, I'm just not going to deal with it. Right. Oh, you're Phil's asking. I think about the deaf MPG. We do not track the miles <clears throat> per gallon on deaf. We, it, it, it is factored into our when I tell you what our percentage of fuel is of revenue, that's all expenses involved with fuel. That's catalyst. That's def. That's anything we spend in the fuel tank is reflected in our numbers. I give you if as, um, right. as fuel costs as re, as percentage of revenue, but we don't track the fuel mileage on it. I mean, if we, if we were a hundred percent deaf fleet, we probably would, but right now it's such a trivial part of it that we don't. And the, the people that we have in those trucks are get better, fuel mileage anyway uh they're just better they're they're they're, they're better fuel mileage drivers uh we got one that's almost eight miles per gallon and the other one's not far behind that so yeah they get good fuel mileage <clears throat> and you know i of course I, I enter every invoice i mean i see it you know our def we'll we'll buy def every other fill, fill up it'll be 14 20 24 i mean it's just so insignificant that it doesn't put any red flags up to me so <clears throat> and uh here's the thing i was I was going to say about the t600 and the t2000s and rocky mentioned it and i didn't know this until we had a guy bought an old anteater uh t600 and rocky looked at it and it was like you've got to completely do away with that rear suspension it's called <clears throat> ag200 or ag400 and it's basically junk um and and you know it, the, the amount of money that you would have to spend to get that rear suspension correct uh, to have good t- tire wear and stuff, it's just it's prohibitively expensive. Um, they got like eight airbags or some shit on them. So um, you, you do not want um, some of those, mm-hmm. I guess this would be late 90s, early 2000s. Um, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, saw your uh, your comment there uh, about going to Pittsburgh Power and, and Rocky, uh, Willie. Be sure and tell well, – Rocky knows where you came from, but make sure you tell Pittsburgh Power where you came from, okay? Mm-hmm. Give us uh, give us a little uh, – show us a little love up there, all right? So we uh, we appreciate them. We need to make sure they understand that their investment in us is, is paying them back. So you guys – if you guys talk to Pittsburgh Power, be sure and tell them, you know, where you heard about them. So appreciate that. Show them a little love. Show well, let's talk. Love. Let's talk about decisions because that's how I've got this one titled. Well, why don't why since we've got a nice segue in Pittsburgh Power, why don't we talk about them right now? Okay. Well, I, there you go. It's on the screen. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, I, I, all of you know, Pittsburgh Power is our is our title sponsor, and uh, you know I've been doing business with Pittsburgh Power since two thousand and nine. Uh, when I, one of the first things that I did. When I uh, started going to Kevin CMC, is I started using their products to improve fuel mileage. Um, now back then they didn't own OPS. OPS was a separate company, 
And of course, I dealt with OPS and I dealt with Pittsburgh Power, you know, the fleet air filter, the muffler, you know, the, a lot of the parts of the stuff that we used. Uh, and I didn't make a, ba a balancer for the Mercedes engines. I couldn't use it. They were almost going to use mine as a template to make one, but then they just couldn't sell enough of them to make it worth their while. So they didn't mm -hmm. do it. But I was going to be the, the first Mercedes with a, a balancer, but it just didn't work out. And also the space between the engine and the, and the radiator was so tight on the Mercedes, they didn't think it would fit in there. Um, but anyway, point is that um, you know, I've been, been using these guys. And, uh, of course, you know, they have such great diagnostics. You know, they, they've got electro engineers on staff. They've got a great mechanical shop. Uh, a great diagnostics shop, uh, not to mention ECM repairs and and just a performance diesel as well as 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 far as, far as a efficient fuel miles diesel. You know, back in the day, they sold that power box and all these guys that had the cats and had the big motors and these power box where you could sit there in the driver's seat and crank the horsepower up. You know, from the driver's seat. Uh, that's kind mm -hmm. of fallen out of favor a little bit. You know, now with all the emissions, you know, controls. But that's what their big thing was way back then. Uh, but anyway, the point is, we've been doing business a long time, long before they were ever a, a, a sponsor. You know, we were, we were talking about them all. All of our early episodes, you know, we're, ta we're talking about them, talking about them. They're not paying for that. But you know, we just believe in the product we, and the guys, especially, you know, the, the, the guys up there, Pete and all the guys. And so anyway, um, now, of course, they have performance diesel stuff and then they've got the they are the distributor for the catalyst which we use, uh, the max mileage fuel borne catalyst. Uh, and of course they own OPS now. So that's, that's our, our number one, um, f modification when we buy this first thing we do. Um, so anyway, uh, if you, if you need parts, uh, they're, they're, they're a big common shop. They're a big Detroit shop. Um, if you, if you need, if you need heart service, if you need help with diagnostics, uh, they also have their own show. Uh, they're on with Dave Nemo, I think, on Tuesdays, Chris. I'm not sure about that. I'm not but they still have. It's called the Pits, the Pit Stop, I think it's called. And uh, and then they're on with Kevin on his uh, streaming show every week. So you can uh, call in and ask him all these questions. I mean, they're they're very very helpful. But you can even call them on the phone. Now, they might mm -hmm. not get to you. I might not be, be talk to you right then, but they'll call you back. And, uh, but, uh, really, really good. They're located right outside of, uh, Pittsburgh and, um, uh, Saxonburg PA. And, um, so anyway, appreciate their support. And, uh, uh, we're starting to get in a truck show time, you know, end of March. So we will be, uh, in, at the truck show, we'll be in their booth and in that area, uh, either Friday or Saturday. I, we don't, I haven't chosen the day yet. But uh, we'll let you know, and we'll be in that area one day, and we'll be in the Lands Landstar. I was getting ready to say Landsberg, uh, the Landstar area, <laughs> the the next day. So you guys want to come by and and, and I don't want to stand. I'll, the Chris has been creating so many enemies on TikTok. I don't know that I want to stand next to him at the truck show. I think I want to keep away apart because they might people. they might mistake and miss and hit me. You know, so none of those people. <clears throat> I have balls big enough to come up and say it to my face. So yeah, probably, uh, probably. they 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 they're a bad ass mofo behind that keyboard. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's yeah. a different story when they're in person. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> thanks uh, thanks Pittsburgh Power, and appreciate you guys. If you guys would uh, let them know where you heard about it, and um, you know, tell them you appreciate them supporting us. So thank you. Sorry, YouTube, I hit the wrong button. Um, I don't like well, when I hear the words, uh-oh, come out of your mouth. Well, no, that one was on me. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. I was trying to be, well, I was trying to be slick. And, and what I did was um, something stupid. <laughs>
So this is just why we need to budget for a producer. Uh, let me start. <laughs> we we need another sponsor besides Pittsburgh Power. Right. Okay. All right. So let me start over real quick. The hardest thing I ever did in my adult life was looking in the mirror and saying, "This is your fault. Uh, nobody else is going to fix it but you. It's your fault. Uh, what Landstar's fault, agents' fault, government's fault. Didn't matter who the president was. It was you. You, the guy in the mirror. Every consequence that I have ever faced in my life." had its origin in some decision that I made. And so we've watched here over the last couple of months as the, um, as the market tightened up and things started to get, uh, uh, get tight for people, um, that they start looking around and trying to shove that blame off onto somebody else. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, one was, a driver missed a delivery appointment for whatever, a tire, something. Not, not one of our drivers. Not one of our drivers. This was a post in a Facebook group. The driver missed an appointment because of a blown tire. Um, had to wait four hours on a loves. We've all been there. And so they missed the delivery appointment. Well, the customer came back and said, your new delivery appointment is 11 days from now. Well, this guy, uh, rightly or wrongly, uh, was upset that the customer said you can't come back for 11 days. And on top of that, because it was a high-value load, uh, they were uh, they were directed to uh, a to secure go, lot. Uh, yeah, to go to secure lot, 250 miles this way or 350 miles that way. So. Um, There, there they were, right? That was that was where they were left. And so um he his his uh solution for this was well, we're just not ever gonna take another load that has a delivery appointment. What we will only now take loads in, in a terrible market where the load to truck ratio is already bad and the rates are already down, and you're going to make more lists of reasons that you're not going to serve the customer because of a problem that you had. Uh, we had another one that got... Uh, well, let, let, let we go let's stay on it, because the depth of that problem wasn't the fact he missed the appointment. The depth was that he was saying that this low was, was bankrupting him. No, this, he, he, guy. that's the next guy. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. This, this guy was, uh, it sounded like he was a fleet owner. Now he kept, it was funny. He kept saying, well, we, we accept full responsibility. And I'm going, yeah, but you kind of not. Um, because you're still, you're still saying you're, 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 he, he, I'll give him credit. He was not blaming the agent. He did not name the agent. He did not slam the agent. Right. But he did the customer. Well, the, the customer shouldn't have done this and the customer shouldn't have done that. Now, we've had it happen in all of the loads that we pull. We had it happen probably, when was that, 2019, I guess. And we had a situation where a driver, through no fault of her own, something happened, and the appointment got moved. Well, she was on dedicated freight, all right? We made the decision to reach out to another BCO that I know, and we paid him, I want to say it was a thousand dollars, wasn't it? I don't remember. I it remember was, the incident. I don't remember how much it cost me. I think we paid him a thousand dollars on a comm check to take that load up to like Pittsburgh from Charleston and deliver it for her because she was on dedicated freight going from Ohio to Texas. We never asked the customer to pay that thousand dollars. We never asked the agent to pay that thousand dollars. We never asked Landstar. Hell, Landstar didn't even know what we did. We just fixed it. Right. Because in the grand scheme of that entire year, that thousand dollars was not going to break us. Now, I'm sure it hurt Larry to write that check, you know, 
but uh, you know, he obviously he got over it. He's still alive here today, almost four years later. And I can't remember the I can't remember the amount, so it wasn't too bad. I want to say it was because it was about five hundred bucks. Or I mean, five hundred miles. You know, by the time he did it all, so I, I think it was a thousand dollars. Um. But I had relationship with a BCO and I could call him up and say, Hey man, I'm in a pickle. Can you help us out? Sure. I can help you out. I'll take that load up there and deliver it. I'm like, well, what do you want? And he ran the numbers and he was like, how about a thousand bucks? And I'm like, sold. Now that load, I remember now that load did not pay very well. It was a filler load. It was a load that we were using to get her back to her origin. Oh, because the load coming out of Texas had canceled. Right. That was it. The, uh, the, she was on a two, a two load, uh, well, they call that a dumbbell Mm -hmm. and the load coming out of Laredo canceled. And so we scrambled to put something together and then it fell apart. But in order to get back, we made a decision. All right. Now let's go to example. Number two, that Larry kind of mentioned a guy goes to a delivery. We've been to this place twice and twice. We've sat there for four or five hours waiting to get unloaded. It was Amazon. You bastards. Um, And for whatever reason, his appointment got rescheduled, then it got rescheduled again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he was probably late. Um, I know the agent is direct freight. Um, You know, I've had my issues there, but it is what it is. But he said, this load has bankrupted me. This load is the reason that I'm going bankrupt. And, of course, I'm like, that we're like, well, how, you know? You know, I, I couldn't stop myself. And I said, well, you know, we've been to that customer twice and we've been delayed, but that customer's not capable of bank- bankrupting us. Um, and so he had a big, long, very lengthy response. And he said, well, I, you know, I was down six months waiting on a part for a CPC. And then I was down three months waiting on a part. Well, I can tell you that even running some Cascadias like we do, um, there is never a time that one of my trucks is going to be sitting six months waiting for a part. I can promise you that because there has not yet been a time when someone has told me, Oh, well, national back order. There's not been one time yet in my five years of doing this, that they have uh, said to me national back order. And I have not had the part on the way within 24 hours. Uh, not once. Right. Uh, cause I got a pen and a cell phone. Isn't that what Obama said? I got a pen and a cell phone. Mm-hmm. I have the ability, but not only do I have the ability, I have the drive and the desire to there you keep, go. My, keep my business afloat and not take no for an answer. Yeah. Well, it's a difference between accepting a victimhood or have, becoming a problem solver and not accepting the victimhood. It's, it's an attitude thing. It's all it is. Well, I can't get the part. I'm just going to sit here and pout and cry and stomp my feet. Or get out and get to work and find the damn part, you know? Uh, well, people you, go, well, how would you do that? Well, it can start out on Google. That would be the first place to start mm-hmm. and go from there. Uh, where everything well, else is that we can find that people go, how do you find out what the toll is on the toll road up there? It's really <laughs> easy. You know? Well, you know, and folks, if you drive a freight liner, if you own a freight liner, I'm sorry, if you own a freight liner, all you have to do is go to the dealership and have them give you the, it's not an easy process, but you can get set up to look at the parts in a uh, accelerator in parts pro under your own VIN number. And you have access to every part number for the truck that you own. Mm-hmm. Um, I have it set up for all of ours, but there was one bit of sweet justice that came from the first guy that posted about his load being delayed for 11 days. This week, I had two of our guys miss delivery appointments. And both appointments were missed because of decisions made by the driver. There was no there was no traffic. There was no snow. There was no breakdown. The only reason that those two guys did not make those appointments is because they did not plan well. Okay? Right. And so I was having a... a kind of a counseling session with one of them after the fact, everything worked out. The customer took the load. Nobody was mad, got the paperwork scanned in. Everything was fine. And so as I'm talking him through and we're going through the math and I'm like, well, you were here and you had to go here and here's what the math says. All right. 
And I showed him where there were a couple of errors in his math. And I showed him where there were a couple of errors in his trip planning. And, and there was a little bit of justification coming back, you know, cause he was, he was under fire, you know, he was being told that he should have done something a different way. And I think I finally got to him when I said, and what would you have done if they would have said, well, Hey, sorry, you missed this appointment. See you next week. And I heard him go, Oh, mm -hmm. what are you going to do when you miss that appointment? And it's your fault, 100% you. You made the trip planning decisions or not, which led to you missing that appointment. And they said, come and come and see us next week. I said, you're going to sit there and babysit that load. If you drive for Swift and you do the very same thing, they're not even going to punish you. They're going to send you to drop that trailer in a lot. They're going to give you another load and some shuttle driver is going to go pick it up and drive it. It's, they're, they're not going to give you a demerit. They're not going to mark anything in your file because that's what they do. But here, you're going to sit there with that load for that 10 or 11 days or whatever it is. You're going to sit there and babysit that load and there's nothing anybody's going to do to stop that from happening. And I wondered as I was telling him that, I wonder, I want, I bet he thinks I'm just making this up. You know, I, I bet he thinks I'm just, I'm just pulling this out of the sky, you know, try to scare him. To make it sound worse. The next yeah. day, literally the next day, this thing pops up on Facebook. They're making me sit with this load for 11 days. And I'm like, told you, told you, yeah. you can't mess mm -hmm. around. You are in business and it's a completely different experience than being an employee. Um, and Larry has tried for 188 episodes now to get everybody to understand that, and it doesn't matter if you're leased to Landstar, doesn't matter if you're leased to Mercer, Prime, Schneider, Swift, JB Hunt, have your own authority. You are a business doing business with a business. You're not an employee anymore. You are the person who bears 100% of the responsibility of success or failure. And if you can't handle the fact that you are 100% solely responsible for the success or failure of your business, you probably not, not get into business. Well, that's, well, part of the reason why I say what I say about not coming to Landstar, you know, people think that we're recruiting for Landstar. We actually am not because if that person expects Landstar to come help him bail out of that situation, he's going to be mad at Landstar because that's not part of their agreement. You know, that's not their deal. Um, you know, they lease you a trailer and it's your, you're on your own. Uh, but the, 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 the instinct for a lot of these guys who've never been in business for themselves before now leasing a truck, you know, from a lease purchase, you know, most of those guys still don't think they're in business. Okay. They still, the reason that that, that lease purchase thing is attractive because they still have somebody, they still have a little bit of a golden parachute, you know, but listen, when you come to Landstar, you don't have that. Okay. And it's, it's, it's up to you to solve your own problems. It's all up to you to, you know, to, to live or die by the decisions that you make. And you've heard me say it before. If you can't come, if you can't be completely independent, and by that I don't mean uh, having numbers. I mean being able to resolve and solve your own problems and make your own decisions and live with the consequences. And then you have no business being here because that's you're not going to like it here because there is no help number, there is no lifeline. You know, it's and, and not not. And even if you try to get help from the Facebook group from the other guy, you're just going to take all the you know, the criticism and mocking and everything you, I mean, it, it, you will be, you'll be twice as upset before the, then, then before you posted it thinking somebody's going to help you. So, um, but, but that's, that's the thing here. You're, you, you've got to be able to be self-sufficient to survive at Landstar. And if you not, if you're not there yet, or if you're not, that's not possible for you. You have no business coming here, you know? Right. You know, a lot of these, uh, I, I, you stir up a lot of comments, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and some of them, when you respond to them, I actually will read what the comments were. And it's, 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 a, it's amazing to me the disinformation 
you know, I'm not going to call it misinformation, it's disinformation because most of it is intentional that people have or think or pass on or spread about what they think Landstar is or is not. Uh, it just amazes me. At, and then, and then, and then it's like that, that game where you whisper something in somebody's ear and by the time it gets around the other end of the room, it's completely different. That's kind of how this is, you know, uh, there'll be something that has a little bit of a fraction of a, of a, you know, the truth in it, but it gets so exaggerated from all the passing, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the word around that it, then it becomes completely ridiculous. You know, I will answer you. What was the one I saw today? Let you have to, I'll tell you, you have to give Landstar all of your whole household information oh. and they'll, let, and they'll, and they'll tell you what kind of freight you can haul to meet, to meet that. Uh, that's the most bullshit I've ever heard. My, I know where it came from. I know where it came from. As a matter of fact, I'm the one that advocated that we quit doing that because they were doing it to give people an idea. There's so many people that come here that have never been in business. It was an exercise at orientation to get you to think about what your what you need to set your rates at in order to fulfill your obligations to yourself. That's what it came. That's what it was designed to do. Uh, but it was misinterpreted, or it was, or the the information was spread. And instead of it being something to help you with, it's like, here's something Landstar requires you to do. You have to give them all of your, you saw that post, right, Chris? Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I couldn't believe that I'm reading this, you know, and that's what people are spreading out there thinking, well, if, if you come to Landstar, you've got to let them know what all of your household expenses are and your debts and everything. And then they'll let, they'll, 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 they'll give you freight based on what you need. I'm just like, how in the world could you come up with that? You know? Well, so Michael's in here. He said, tell them about my mistake in Laredo. Um, well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't fatal and it wasn't deadly, but it was, you know, kind of dumb. Um, if you've never been to Laredo for Landstar, um, and you're dropping a trailer that has to go to Mexico, it, the trailer has to be inspected. Um, I guess they want to make sure that everything's there before it goes so that they can account for that. Everything is still there when it comes back. Uh, and there was a bad tire and some lights out. Well, he gets up to the inspection and they're like, red tag. Well, he's still got to make a delivery. He's still got to drop a trailer. He's still got all this stuff to do. And, um, and they're like, well, for, Hey, 550 bucks, you know, you can go on about your way and, and we'll take care of, of delivering the load. And then I, you know, verified with the agent and I was right, but you know, it was a $150 mistake, $150. not going to put anybody out of business, but, I would rather have $150 to spend on what I want to spend on rather than $150 going to some Cracker Jacket at, at LMO. Um, but we see um, the, the, the transition that we watch happen here as people come in um, it is uh, like your maintenance, you know, Look, if you're a company driver, just hold it to the floor until it don't go anymore. You know, they'll send you another one, you know. Um, as long as you can avoid the CSA points, it doesn't really matter. You know, the transmission can fall out. They don't care. They'll just give you another truck. But when you're an owner-operator, you have to be in tune with that vehicle. You have to know every sound that it makes. You have to, you have to be aware that when a problem begins, uh, oh, gosh, I've got a problem. I better fix it now before it becomes something much, much bigger. Um, and carrying tools, you know, having some, some basic tools. Um, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a good one on Barb. Um, when we first got the truck that she's driving, it's an 18 Cascadia and God dropped it off. And literally the next day, somebody backed into it and the truck stopped. And it knocked the headlight loose. Well, I I did some redneckery and some surgery on it with epoxy, and I got it all put back together, and I put the headlight back in. And that lasted about four months until she's driving down the road and the headlight leaves the chat. Now, what was interesting about this is the VIN number for that truck calls for the super-duper LED headlights that are like 1200 bucks a piece. Now I'm wondering if maybe Crete at some point in the life of that truck, maybe that hood got tore up and they put an older model hood on it. And I'm calling the guy. I'm like, dude, we don't have that kind of headlight. He's like, well, in the VIN number you do. 
And I'm like, well, I promise you it's the other one. So it went from a $1,200 tail light to a $200 tail light. And, and I said, I mean, it's probably tore up the wiring harness. He said, don't worry, but I got the wiring harness, got everything. Well, she swung in there and I'm expecting the phone call. All right. Well, I got to go to TA or loves, you know, we got to find somebody to put it in. No, hell no. She just bolted it right in there. Got all the wires fixed, put it back together right there in the parking lot and took off with it, you know? And I, but that's what it takes, you know? Um, if, if yeah. she would have said, okay, well, this is beyond my scope. This is something too difficult for me to do. We're going to have to go to the TA or the loves or whoever. Well, how much time is that going to take? Set aside the labor, you know, it's probably $125, but when are they going to get to you? And do they even have the smarts to put the thing on? You know, <laughs> are they, are they allowed to do that kind of work? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're not allowed to use a test light. Uh, we that's sat actual, down, That's a quote, by the way, from a TA person. We had one at a TA, Jeffersonville, Ohio. Ohio, yep. Uh, sent them in there for a chassis lube, and part of the chassis lube is they checked the differentials, and they found some metal on the plug of the differential. And I'm like, well, let's go ahead and dump it and refill it. Oh, we don't, we don't have hub oil. Of course you yeah. don't. And we don't, and we don't do a dump and refill. No, 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 no. That was the next day. Okay. Um, they didn't, the TA in Jeffersonville didn't have any hub. Just oil. didn't have the hub. Oil. And I said, well, you know what? That's all right. Swing by a speed coat. Keep, keep, can we focus in on gotcha. the word speed in speed? Right. Co? Right. right. Well, just run through a speed coat. So he gets to a speed co in Tennessee. I think it was Tennessee. And he calls me and he goes, Hey, these guys don't do dump and refill. And I said, flush, really? flush and fill, flush and refill. Well, yeah, we, we don't do that here. And I, so I went to Love's website and there it is right there. And it literally says, Part of their service. So I screen I screenshotted it. Transmission and gearbox services. Service includes complete drain of all fluids, fill to capacity, and visual inspection. Uh we don't we don't have any uh we don't have any hub oil here. We're not set up to do oil changes. Are y'all are, are y'all serious? Uh oh, Zod. I've had a loves technician tell me that they aren't allowed to use a test light also. What the hell do y'all people have against a damn test light? <laughs> For the love of all that is good and kind. It's not the test light. It's the ability to, to understand what it's telling you. Well, they don't have that. They don't have that equipment, you know, and it's, a, it's an HR problem, not a, not a, not an equipment problem. Uh, uh, I wish. Now, if you, if you could get a tire iron with a wire on it, where you could use it as a test light, they could use that. Okay. Yeah. Well, they'd probably do, you know, things with the probe, you know, that we, we shouldn't talk about. Um, right. I wish I could have been there to help tear down the TA in Nashville. You know, if I could have helped swing a hammer uh, yeah. to help. They, you know, they could have sold tickets to that for truck drivers. Come oh. by and bring a hammer and help us tear this building down. Because <laughs> um, that's that's the bunch that wouldn't, that refused to use the test light uh, on Richie's truck. And so I don't, I don't, hang on a second, time out. I don't know if you've pissed off enough people on TikTok. We haven't had one comment tonight on I TikTok. Know. It's crazy. We got a bunch of hearts. So there's a couple of people watching. So we got love, but we don't have any hate. So, okay. Wait a minute. I just thought maybe I was, you know. All right. Steve says test light can burn up modules if used wrong. Hmm. Okay. I could buy that. I could buy that. Um, and I could also buy that TA would put a prohibition on the single celled organisms that they pull off of the street, you know, that were flipping burgers yesterday. Um, but I am going to, I'm going to counter that, especially in this situation, I said, dude, I just need to know if there's, is there voltage or is there voltage? So I tell them after Richie had a test light, but it was broke. Right. And I'm like, do you have a voltmeter? And my wife could come in here and testify because I was sitting in that living room yonder and she watched my blood pressure rise as I'm talking to this idiot. 
Um, and he said something to the effect, uh, he's, uh, well, we don't work on ELDs. I said, buddy, I, I, I just need you to check for voltage. And he goes, we can't do that. I said, you can't use a fucking voltmeter. Are you serious right now? Take your truck to the dealer, sir. And hung up on me. Hmm. I, listen, it's, it's exactly six hours and 45 minutes from my house to the TA in Nashville. And y'all don't know how tempted I was to drive down there and stick my foot straight up his ass in person. <laughs> and the poor guy at Antioch, when I called, uh, he answered the phone and I said, Hey, I have a question. He was like, yeah. I said, do you have a technician in your shop that possesses a voltmeter? And he goes, uh, yeah. And I said, would said technician take a voltmeter and check a circuit for me? And he was like, well, yeah. Can I bring that truck to you and have, have you check this circuit? And he goes, I mean, yeah, it'll be a little while. And I said, well, I've got a truck downtown at the TA. And he went, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's heard this story before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> anyway, um, back to the topic. It, 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 you have to be willing to, uh, explore beyond what you think, you know, what you think you're capable of knowing, because I, I wish we lived in a, in a world where you could go into the TA or hell, the Freightliner dealer, you know, and be confident that they have a person who's paid to be there, whose job it is to understand how brakes work. But it's 2023, and I, as a manager of trucks, cannot make the assumption that a person with patches on their arms and their name on their shirt is actually capable of knowing what brakes are and knowing what a slack adjuster is and knowing how to test a circuit. I, I, I literally cannot make that assumption. Uh, conversely, I have to make the assumption that they don't have a clue what they're talking about. They don't know what brakes are because they were busting down tires yesterday and TA sent them up to Lodi for a three-day class, and now they're certified. Well, what does that leave me with? It leaves me with me because uh, the one person I can 100% trust all the time is me. You know, and, and so, you know, if you've watched the TikToks of me rehabbing this truck, all that stuff I've either learned by watching or I took it apart and went, well, there it is. Let's see if we can put it back together. But if you're not willing to do that, don't buy a truck. Hello from Moorhead, Kentucky. I don't know if you know this or not, but Moorhead, Kentucky is where Chris and I met the yep. first time um, to uh, see if we uh, could work together. At the Cracker there, Barrel in Moorhead, Kentucky. Right there at the Caucasian Container. Caucasian <laughs> um, Container. <laughs> yeah. Right beside the BP gas station. <laughs> yeah. It was a good night. <clears throat> probably said they can't mount a tire or air it up to a proper pressure. Oh, it, uh, well, that's you know, too. I, I, I bought four new tires for my pickup truck and I've watched my whole life. I've watched people use a little machine and bust the tires down and put them on and put them on the balance machine. Mm -hmm. And so this was a great opportunity. I was there at the shop. I thought, you know what? I'm going to mount and balance my own tires. Let me promise y'all. That's the first and the last. And the last. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it. I can say that I have done it. I have I have mounted and balanced four tires. I don't ever want to do it again. That shit's yeah. a whole lot easier than it looks. No, it's a whole lot harder than it looks. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, it's a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, it looks a lot easier than it is. Um, <clears throat> when I was in high school, I worked at, you remember Montgomery Wards? You remember mm -hmm. those stores? Yeah. We had one in the mall, and they had a, they had a, a service, you know, a, shop there mm -hmm. and then when i was in high school i, I did that I, I mounted and busted down and mounted tires at montgomery wards and you had to go up you had to go upstairs and get pull your own tires out of inventory roll them you're, going, you're usually doing four so you're rolling mm -hmm. four tires mm -hmm. you know down these steps down to the shop 
to go over there where you are. And it became like a race because, you know, there's three or four guys in there and everybody wanted to be the best guy, you know. So okay. they start timing, you know, and see how long it took you to get four mounted and balanced on the car, you know. It's kind of like a pit stop, NAS a NASCAR pit stop, you know. When I worked <clears> in <throat> air gas, <clears throat> those guys would roll those big 300 uh, size cylinders mm -hmm. and they would yeah, get up, yeah. they would be tilted like this. And they'd yeah. have a hold of the lid and they just, yeah, just, doing they just that. roll yeah. them things across the parking lot. And I get the first hold the first one. It knocks my ass over, <laughs> over my skin, you know, I, and then I pick it back up and it wrestles me the other way. And I'm laying on the ground with a damn, you know, that's one of those things people make. The first time I had to unload a 55 gallon, I worked at the, at the Napa store when I was in college a little bit and I mixed paint. That's what I did. I mixed paint. So we had this uh, delivery truck came to bring a big 55 gallon thing of thinners. I don't know where it was. But anyway, mm -hmm. and so I, I had to, I, they wanted me to unload it out of this truck. It was a box truck, you know. I walked out there, there's no lifter and there's no tailgate lifter. I think, what the fuck am I going to, how am I going to load this? <laughs> this old guy, he's probably 80 years old. He said, get the hell out of the way, boy. So he gets a couple of tires and throws over there, gets up on a truck and rolls that thing out and he hits those tires. And I'm thinking, that's going to bust and go everywhere. Son of a bitch, it didn't. Hit those tires, bounced, stood straight up. He rolled it in the, in the in the you know it made me look like an idiot mm -hmm. here i was 17 18 years old 20 maybe yeah this guy's 84 and he's kicking my ass you know <laughs> yeah I, I did a i did a uh a load for uh it's when they were rebranding justice that uh teenage girl clothes store they were i think it was justice 20 <clears throat> so they're remodeling their stores and i had all the fixtures for this remodel and they had these purple and green tables. And in the trailer, they had them stacked upside down, one on top of another. And we're all wrapped in blankets and all that stuff. And we had this kid. He's probably 22, 23 years old. And he just grabs all that table and picks it up. And I said, how old are you? I said, he said, 23. I said, you got about three more years of doing that. Because one of these days, you're going to pick that table up and there's going to be a snap. And that's going to be the end of it. You know, so please, son, protect your back. <clears throat> Check out Barbara's post here. Just guys, right I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, oh. we 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 got it. We got a sharp cookie here. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I I love I love to have females in the program because I love to make the guys go just cringe, you know, because they 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 can't hold a candle to them typically. So anyway, I'll shut up before I get in trouble. <laughs> so Barb <laughs> says, just ran the math for the last five fuel ups on def mile per gallon. Kind of small data set. Just pulled recent receipts from Dropbox. But the 18 Cascadia got 176.7 mile per gallon of death this week. Okay. I've always heard 200, 250. Um, but, I mean, I, I've heard people use it as a diagnostic tool, you know, right, right. where if you get a spike and you start using a lot more death, that might be a sign you've got a problem. Sure. Maybe we could track it for that reason. But, um, you know. Well, if, as we add more of these, you know, Lunatic 2.0, we're probably going to have what, what you have to do is you have to do create a second fuel gauges account for each truck and you do the fuel in one, the def in the other one, and you just have them connected. You know, uh, it's not hard to do. It's just we haven't, I mean, we even had, we haven't even had def except for the last year or so. So hasn't been anything we've really dealt with, but we may have to start doing it. Matter of fact, well, why don't we let Barbara be the, the, um, yeah, the test, the test mark? Anything. Yeah. Get her to start. Barbara, you need to start another fuel gauges account. You know, make it your truck number DF or whatever and start tracking your def usage. Let us know how it works. Okay. You, you well, can teach us how to do it. So, <clears throat> we, since we have an account for that truck, couldn't we just create a separate in that account? Because you've got multiple trucks in your account. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. But you just, just got to have a, you got to have two different. Not accounts, but you have, but you have, yeah, you have to, you can't put them in the same database. I'll anymore. go in there and create it and then, okay. Uh, so, 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 so y'all understand what we're talking about. What we've done is we've created a separate fuel gauges account for each truck. Now, Larry has the master account that has all of the trucks in it. Okay. But when we put iPads in each of the trucks, we set up a fuel gauges account for each truck. Now, Larry has the official account that holds all the trucks. What I do on Saturday evening when the card activity report comes in, I go in and I make the amount that they paid for fuel match the card activity report because all they're doing is going off of what Landstar 1 said it was on that day. But that's allowed us to 
begin training the drivers to do that because their their responsibility and their assignment is to enter that into fuel gauges and scan the receipt in the drop box before they leave the fuel pump because that's one of those habits that you have to create if you're going to be in business that didn't matter when you're a company driver and now it does and so that's one of the little training things that we do to make sure that you're scanning your receipt logging your transaction scanning your paperwork when you're done and now that you have entered the data from landstar one at the time you got the fuel now you have something to compare to your card activity statement to make sure that everything matches and it's usually off by a dollar but i tell you i don't know how greg does it but every fill up that greg does is within five cents of what the card activity report does nobody else is that close most people are off by a dollar or 50 cents but greg's is to the damn penny. I don't know how he does it. Got to be careful with the damn one box. They like to go between five and 700. Yeah. Well, the good thing now is the market has finally responded. DPF alternatives. Uh, what's the name of that company? Something core Recore. But they have come up with a way now to rebuild these one boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at a fraction of the thirteen or fifteen thousand um, dollars. But they have like welders and people that can because one thing that um Chase from DPF Alternatives has taught me is that inspecting the box um is as much the outside of the box is just as important as what's inside the box where the filters and all that stuff is if the box itself has cracks um that stuff needs to be welded up and taken care of uh but these things get so hot and then so cold and then hot and then cold that that metal is eventually going to deteriorate to some degree um you know so um but, you know, again, at, at least the market is making it to where these trucks are now manageable. You just have to understand that if you're going to buy a, a Cascadia with a DT12 versus a Columbia, you're going to pay $6,500 to have a clutch in where we could do one in a, a Columbia for $2,500. You know, you got to be ready to spend that extra $4,000. Um, and God help you if the transmission ever goes out because we found out that's $9,000. Yeah. for a transmission um i mean it's you know it, it it and so there again it goes back to um and i see that in our comments we uh especially on tiktok and we're talking about old trucks well i'm gonna get a newer truck with warranty and your truck's a piece of crap okay well let's compare the operating cost of my truck my 2007 versus the operating cost of a truck where the clutch is triple and the transmission is triple. Uh, differentials are the same. Brakes are the same. Shocks are the same. Uh, but then you get a CPC that goes bad. And if you can find one, it's a couple of thousand dollars. There are problems there on those trucks that literally do not exist on a Columbia Century. Yeah, Barb, take care of that clutch. Don't mess around with that clutch. Yeah. Speaking of Greg, he just reported his fuel mileage. I saw that. <clears throat> 40 cents per mile this week. 7.47 miles per gallon in a 2003 Midriff mm -hmm. Columbia. With a with Mercedes Ford, engine. Mercedes MBE 4000 and a 13 speed. Pull in a flatbed with ugly freight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, listen, Greg, we always talked about William Haynes, but Greg is a fuel mileage Jedi master. He, he is. He is. I have Bar listen, Barb's they're neck and neck. I mean, they've got, they've got a little friendly com uh, competition going, I believe, but they're, they're neck and neck. Um, it's funny how we can put a driver in a truck and we can look back and see the fuel mileage, what's done for the last, whatever it was so many months or before with the previous driver. And somebody gets in that truck and just all of a sudden, just, it just goes up, a, a, you know, a mile, mile and a half a gallon just by changing the driver. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very in, in, um, interesting how that works. And sometimes it works the opposite. We've had people that we put in trucks that we know got good fuel mileage and they couldn't get half the fuel mileage out of it. Um, 
but it just goes to show you it's all about the driver. You know? Some uh, some of y'all need to jump over to uh, TikTok and put some hateful comments. What are those uh, hidden to protect the community? Uh, where's yeah, community, Rich? community community guidelines? Yeah, somebody go and put some hateful comments in our TikTok because yeah, it's you, not you, going to anybody. You've pissed off somebody at, at TikTok, and they're probably not even broadcasting this. This I've never seen us not have one comment. I do get we do get some love. We get some hearts floating up there every once in a while, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't see any statistics. Right Josh, uh, Josh's truck adventures. Um, grab your steel toes because I'm about to step all over your toes. <laughs> Everyone's fuel mileage would get better if paid a hybrid mileage slash per hour. Nope. Nope. And I'm living proof of this. Okay. From 1997 to 2011, I was bribed, threatened, cajoled uh, in, in every possible way to get better fuel mileage. And you know what? The one thing that made me get fuel mileage better, I started paying for the fuel. Nothing else worked. Nothing else worked. Um, the only thing that made me behave was when I started paying the fuel. And I promise you that if you take any one of our guys or girls and you take them out of our truck and put them in their own truck and everything's the same, their fuel mileage will go up when they get in their own truck. Why? Because they feel the pain. Yep. And, and unfortunately, humans respond to pain. Y'all want to pretend like they don't, but by God, they do. Um, oh, I got to tell this one because this goes into the whole decision-making thing. My wife and my daughter went to the mall the other day. And when they got back, my wife reported that my 17 year old that has the $10 an hour job paid $70 for a pair of pants. And so I waited a couple of days and I brought her in and I set her in this chair right here. And I said, Hey, um, well, tell me about these pants you bought. And so she's telling me about them. I said, so you, you paid $70 for a pair of pants. And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, well that's illogical, unreasonable, excessive, and unnecessary. And I kind of watched your face start to crinkle. I said, look, you have to work seven hours to pay for those pants. Okay. You spent 30% of your weekly income on a pair of pants. I make 10 times what you do. And the only time I've ever paid more than $20 a pair for a pair of pants is when Larry threatened me to have a <laughs> pair of dress pants for something. I don't know if it was the event or uh, uh probably our dinner probably our awards dinner i think it was i'm gonna threaten you this year with yeah the the threat this year is you're going to come in a three-piece suit fuck you um i went to kohl's and i paid 55 dollars for a pair of khaki pants and i about threw up because my black i have a pair of black pants that i bought at a flea market in london kentucky in 2002 and i think i paid 12 dollars for them and they have served me now for 20 years, okay? You do know that Walmart and Sam's Club has dress pants, right? Well, for whatever reason, on that day, I found these pants at Kohl's. They were $55, and I hated it, okay? So I went through all of this with my child, and I said, look, what I want you to do is I want you to find a way to reassign that dopamine hit that you get from buying the thing to the size of your savings account. That's I want you to transfer that that emotional high into opening up the app on your phone and saying, look, I got a thousand dollars. I got $1,500. I got $2,000. I got $10,000. I said, now look, if you're 30 years old and you got a money in the bank, I don't care how much you pay for pants, but I'm going to promise you this. And I said this at the end because I knew she would only remember the last thing that I said. And if you ever spent $70 for a pair of pants, I will punch you square in the mouth. Well, but the man, there's a lot here. There's a lot going on. First of all, can you can you hear the hypocrite in you coming out? Number one, number two, those pants are a lot more important to her than they would be to you because of her situation and what's important to her in her life and her age and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but I, it's, it's interesting to see the perspective now. All of a sudden, between well, you and her, I'm as, as as it was between when I met you. you know? I'm listening to a grandfather 
right now. See your grandfather gene kicked in where you'll yeah, just all yeah. kinds of bullshit. You, know, <laughs> you would never justify for anybody else on planet earth, you know, but Papa's going to be like, Oh honey, go buy what you want to get. You go get that dopamine yet. Sugar. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <clears throat> I, I remember talking to her one time or talk, you, you and I were talking. We're, mm -hmm. I was telling you, and I was explaining to you, I think, maybe, I mean, anyway, she picked up on the idea that if she were to save 25 bucks a week, how much money she'd have when she retired. You remember oh, yeah. that conversation? Yeah, she was her, walking. We were on the her phone. Eyes, she her eyes got big and she stopped and looked. And <laughs> Yeah. That's what's so good about having, you know, these young guys that we get into programming, you know, and, and gals, you know. You know, we can, you can teach them stuff at an early enough age that they get that benefit of the compound, magic compound interest, you know. But it's got to be early and it's got to be consistent and you got to leave it alone, you know. But, man, I mean, and, and your income is your number one wealth building tool that you have, is your income. So, um. Man, I can't believe it. I mean, I, I, I'm shocked at how quiet. I, I'm, 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 I kind of had my boxing gloves ready and everything. Oh, I had man. my mouth guard in already. I was figuring I was going to have to fight somebody else on account of what you've done this week at TikTok. But, but um, I've seen jeans at 200. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I have too. Um, <laughs> well, I we take to. the teachable moments where we can get them, you know. There you go. A teaching moment. Mm hmm. Well, what's uh, let's go. Let's talk about this week. What what have we been doing in our fleet this week? Um, we've got um, we've got, got a pretty good uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, we've. Uh, I mean, I'm looking right now at uh, at uh, revenue this week, except for said Barbara, who, by the way, I think took off a day in Houston to to visit a love interest. Maybe I'm just guessing there, but I know that um, she has a special person in Houston. Except for her, everybody else met or exceeded quota this week. Mm -hmm. um, and she would have if she hadn't taken a day off, I think. But uh, we had a, we've had a good week. We've actually have, we're over, we're over goal this week, uh, as it stands right now. That, but that doesn't happen a lot right now because of the, yeah. obviously the rate structure. But we've got a, we got a great week, you know. Um I mean, everybody, I'm, I'm looking at paychecks, you know, I'm going to have to write some heavy checks this week. Um, I actually, I wrote a $3,000 check in the last, who was that to Chris? I wrote uh, a $3,000 uh, paycheck to somebody. Was that Greg? Greg, probably. The week after Thanksgiving. Is that when it was? Yep. There it is right there. He did a $15,000 week the week after Thanksgiving. I, I wrote him a, a, in excess of a $3,000 check, which I was happy to do by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, Richie's finally showed up. You're okay. an hour late. Yeah. Well, again, he's home and gotten soft. Yeah. How long, he's been home now, what, three weeks? Yeah. He'll never be the same. He'll never ever be the same. He's soft. He's you know. I think we've ruined him. Speaking of ruination, no enabler. We do not need any blue MFs. <clears throat> they are unnecessary at this juncture. But they're effective. I will tell you that <laughs> yeah. they're effective. Well, you know, nobody, I don't think nobody made it completely abundantly clear to me that that was pretty much 100% liquor with like a splash of Sprite. Um, <laughs> well, um, you know, when you, when you drink bourbon out of a glass with an ice cube in it, that's a hundred percent liquor with no splash of Sprite. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, so I mean, you're just a little candy as you drink all those drinks with all those little umbrellas in it. And that blue, that blue motorcycle is about that tall. So blue motorcycle. Yeah. Um, Did you ever see, do you know that there's a, a, a movie that Samuel L. Jackson was in called snakes on a plane? I have, I, I haven't seen it, but I've, I've known that of the movie. Yeah. And so, you know, there's the line, I'm tired of these MF snakes on this MF plane. Well, that movie played on FX on network cable. And mm -hmm. I was so curious. I'm like, how are they going to address? Um, and so I waited for that scene to get there. And there's Samuel L. Jackson, they not playing. He goes, enough is enough. I have had enough of these monkey fighting 
snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. And I fell out of my chair. I'm like, of all the words that y'all could come up with, monkey fighter. So, you know. Uh, did you see Steve's note, note here? Just searched for lo the live on TikTok yeah, and it yeah. did not see you in the search results. Something's weird going on because we, we've, I mean, we see people, well, somebody oh, just did a test comment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, now we got, now we got one. Royal but, wind. Um, is there an axle gear ratio that is too tall? Yeah, absolutely. Well, but that's kind of one of those things that it doesn't have really anything to do with the ratio. It's the relationship. Wait, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's the relationship of the tire size, the gear right. ratio, the transmission the final, final drive, drive. And where yeah. does the engine like to run? Exactly. You know, so it's. But I mean, you could get, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's hard to overcome an extreme on either one of those, you know? Right. So they've all got to be relatively in the sweet spot to make it work. Um, but you know, what we look at there is what he said. We, we have to know number one, the tire, the circumference of the tire out, outside diameter of the tire. We have to know what the final drive ratio is in the transmission. We have to know the, um, rear entry. Now we only have to know two of those three. We can find the third one if mm -hmm. we have the other two. Through the power of mathematics. Absolutely. And then we, and then we all, of course have to know how you intend to drive the truck. At that point in time, we can na nail down what it's supposed to be, what it needs to be, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and how you accomplish. And then we can look at, well, okay, well, let's say that, let's say it's a Detroit that we, you know, old Detroit, we want that to think to be about 1350, 1325 RPMs. Now we know what to do how to spec it to get it there, you know, by, by knowing that. So, but it, again, depends on what you're going to do. You have to understand our m mission here is fuel mileage. You know, we're over the road fuel mileage. Now, if you're hauling heavy shit out of a forest, that's a whole different story, you know? So, mm -hmm. well, and it's, I was watching, uh, I was watching some show the other day and they had this old challenger and they were running it on a road course. It was like a 70 model challenger and they put a six speed in it. And so they were able to put a 411 rear gear in it you know, so it would get up off the corner. And then they had, you know, of course the thing would rev to 8,000 RPMs. Well, you've got a range this big, but when you're in a big truck, you've got 1,250 to 1,400 RPMs. You know, that's what you got to play with. And so if you make the wrong decision with a gear uh, or a transmission, you know, and, and you don't know, like, for example, my friend Randy, has an old Schneider truck. So it has a direct drive 10 speed and two sixty fours. Well, it was an internally cooled transmission and the transmission cooler went out, filled the transmission full of coolant, junked the transmission. So he goes into the Detroit shop. Somebody read the tag wrong or somebody ordered something wrong or somebody shipped something wrong. And he called me and he said, what's your, uh, uh, what's your RPMs at such and such. And I'm told him, he's like, man, I'm, I'm going 75 and I'm, I'm turning, 1200 rpms and i got to thinking and i saw that picture of that orange truck and i said dude they've put an overdrive transmission in your truck with them 264s that thing will run 300 miles an hour you know <laughs> and sure enough they had ordered the wrong transmission or it was shipped wrong with it so they had to take it back in pull it back right. out put right. the direct drive in it you know um and of course he's a race car driver so he loved it you know sure, sure. and i said how's your fuel mileage right now he's like i'm getting about three and i'm like yeah we yeah can't. yeah we, we can't keep doing that. Why are y'all talking about Pizza Hut? Mr. Pizza Hut doesn't count your first name as valid. What are they talking about? I don't know. I think they've been in those M, those blue MFs already tonight. I guess so. And Richie's been mispronouncing pronouncing fajitas. I guess he said fajita. Who knows? <laughs> Probably. Um, so here's, a, here's a, a, a serious comment. I heard you say once that overdrive was bad for fuel mileage. I thought overdrive was better for fuel mileage. Well, let's, let's probably qualify that a little bit. Um, the problem with overdrive is the parasitic drain. Um, mm -hmm. because the closer you can get that transmission to be direct drive, the less parasitic drain that you have, you know, from, uh, from, from the, uh, j just the, the, the splashing of the gears and the oil. And I mean, all the things that the, the all the physics that have to More happen moving parts exactly to make that, to make that overdrive work. The fewer of those you have, the less loss of power that you have, the less loss of energy that you have. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and again, it, it's like overdrive. I mean, it's like, um, um, 
uh, few, um, cruise control. You know, the, the assumption is that cruise control makes you get better fuel mileage, and nine nine times out of ten, it does not because it. You know, the assumption is not based on physics. And so, in this situation, the closer you can stay one to one, the better chance you have of of, of having less mechanical parasitic drain. And let's and therefore let's clarify what one to one means. The transmission has an input shaft and it has an output shaft. A direct drive transmission means that the input shaft where the motor is connected to and the output shaft that the drive shaft is connected to are one to one. They're turning the same speed. Right. When you're using an overdrive, your input shaft is turning a thousand. Your tail shaft is now turning 1200, right? It's not exact, but the overdrive is generally 0.75, okay? Well, think about if you've ever rode a 10-speed bike. The higher that you get on those bigger gears that make you go faster, the harder you have to pump that right. those pedals in order to maintain that speed. And so that's the, uh, that, that's the, the, the theory there is the one-to-one -one direct drive transmission with like a 264 rear end is going to be more efficient because you don't have the parasitic drain. It's not that overdrive is bad. Overdrive is not bad in and of itself, but direct drive is better, you know? And so you just have to know what engine do I have? Do mm -hmm. I have a Cummins, a Cat, a Detroit? Where does the Cummins, Cat, or Detroit like to run? All right, now I've got that. All right, now what speed am I willing to run? Detroit's 1350. We'd like to be about 62, 63 miles an hour. Then we'll go from there and say, okay, well, then in order to get this RPM at this speed, I need to have these gears. That's what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Is there any additional fuel saving devices or tech that you have considered using that you don't currently? Uh, well, we have, we have air tabs on two trucks, I think. So air tabs is one that we don't, I mean, we could. And we should. Do. It's just, it's a minor thing. It, uh, we just don't do it. Yeah, so they're what? 300 bucks. Or something. And they're, yeah, and, they're, and it's a fractional. I mean, it's not a huge thing. Um, I, probably not. I mean, all the, you have to also keep in mind, we have to put drivers in trucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like there, if I owned the truck, I'd probably have the flow below and some of the things that, you know, that would help me. The yeah. fast would be huge, but the fast is really impractical when you're going to have a company driver in the truck. Right. Um, the fast, if you own a truck, I would absolutely recommend putting a fast on it. Yeah. But the extra mm -hmm. level of care and not care the, of, you know, just maintenance and understanding of the fast system is, it's just, it's just one little notch too much. So that's yeah. probably the big one that we would use as an owner operator that we don't use on the fleet trucks. We have to balance, you know, practicality and the, the, the fuel mileage technology. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, we get drivers that, you know, that, you know, they're, it's they're, like they're not used to having to worry about the performance of the truck. And, you know, and, and if it's something, they just pull it in the shop and get in another one, you know, it doesn't work here. You know, you have to, you have to live with the truck. And so we want to try to do something they sort of, fits both requirements. And it, it's kind of like the step deck, you know, the step deck in and of itself is not a problem, but when you're trying to do what we're doing, teaching business while teaching, uh, you know, flatbed securement or platform securement and all that stuff, the step deck is a little impractical for what we do. That's why we're looking for a flatbed. So if you want to buy or lease a step deck from us, um, uh, the, but that it's like the, 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 what's practical for us as a fleet. There are a couple of things that you can do as an owner operator that will put you another little notch up. Yeah. And I think Phil, you know, Phil of course is our, is our flatbed program coordinator and dispatcher. And, and I think his, you know, I think his contacts and a lot of his connections uh, are, are, are seem to be more suited to the flatbed than the other step deck, you know, so, um, in our situation, it would be better if we had 
another platform, another flatbed and, and not the step deck. We got the step deck because the driver that we were going to, that we got that for, and that's what he wanted to, it was his, his experience was in that. That's what he wanted to do. Well, he's, he's already, you know, he's no here, not here anymore. And so now we're having to, to teach with this step deck and it's not that it's bad. It's just, we could get a little bit better. Um, um, we can teach a little bit data. better and a little bit better pay. Yeah. We've got we the have. data that says the Conestoga <clears throat> in the 53 foot trailer make a lot more money. Your resolution just went to hell. Uh, must be on your end because everything looks good on my end. Hmm. Well, I don't, it's just you. I see me fine. I don't see you very good. I'm looking <clears> at the <throat> TikTok live and it looks, it looks good. So, um, well, yeah, well, you are quiet tonight. That's yeah, really must be the getting ready for the holidays. Everybody's drinking eggnog or something. <clears throat> Speaking of holidays, we probably ought to look ahead a little bit because uh, I'm sure there's going to be some interruption here. Next weekend is uh, Christmas Eve Eve. I don't think we're going to end up having a podcast next weekend. I wouldn't think. Weekend after that, we're going to be in. Uh, well, we're, well, we're, we we. We could do we could do it on Saturday night, the thirtieth, but that is New Year's Eve. Um, well, we'll be here. No, it is. It's, no, it is. It's not New Year's Eve. So uh, New Year's Eve's the thirty first. The thirty first. You want to do it on Saturday, the thirtieth, while we're together? Yeah. Yeah. Richie's going to be there. We can get him on there. Oh, Let's just cool. do that. We got three months. So, so we're going to move the podcast to the thirtieth, um, and we'll be in. We'll all be together in West Virginia. We're going to have a little managers meeting there. And then next week, you want to cancel it, or do you want to do it without me? I think we're going to cancel because that weekend, there's going to be Christmas parties and family yeah. get-togethers and stuff all over okay. the place. Okay. So I would say we'll probably just skip next week. Okay. So we won't be here next week. The following week, we'll be here on New Year's Eve Eve. And um, we will... Um, <clears throat> It will be, uh, it'll be, it'll be good. Has Richie ever been on a podcast with us? Just at the live event. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. So yeah. is Richie still on here? He was. We'll see. Hopefully not. He don't need to know ahead of time. Is is Amber going to come with him, you think, or not? I doubt it. Could we coerce her into coming with him? Maybe. Amber, are you on here still? <clears throat> Uh, five year profitable OP in 07 Columbia debating myself upgrade better ride. Listen, y'all make me think. Re it would make be me rethink it. Okay. Yeah. No, no. You five year profitable operation in 07 Columbia debating myself to upgrade for a better ride. I wouldn't. No, I absolutely. No, absolutely. Hell no. Hell no. <clears throat> they ain't no upgrade, you know, from an 07 as far as I'm concerned. Paint no. it. Put a better seat in it and paint it. You know, yeah. if you want to upgrade. Yeah. No. I, if you're if if you're making money, now you know I would I would try to improve your you know your profitability if you can. I mean, that's the upgrade I would do. I wouldn't upgrade the, the truck. I just upgrade how much money you're making out of it. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It would be nice to have a way to incentivize a driver with money to encourage economical driving it's hard to do i mean we you know obviously we have a little different driver here in our program they they're here to learn business they have the desire to want to understand how to save money so and our, our, ours is just simply a very um subtle um uh peer group pressure you know a uh, comparison Every Sunday, I publish all the fuel mileage. And if you get to where you're tired of being last on the list, you start doing something about it, you know? Uh, if you're like Barbara and Greg and are neck and neck all the time, one of them wants to be higher than the other, you know? So that 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 just that attitude of competition. But we've got people that, you know, that want to strive to do the best they can, you know? A regular old truck driver out there, it's really, really hard to do. I, when I had truck drivers, I always had some type of incentive program. The best one I ever had, Okay, here's the best one I ever had. It's when I involved the spouse in the program. Okay, mm. 
I would have I would have a program, okay, and then if, and if they've got the money, I would make the check out to the spouse and mail it to the spouse around the driver. Because then if she didn't get the check next week, guess whose ass she's up, you know. <laughs> so that was the most effective one I had. But, you know, it's everybody doesn't have a spouse, and sometimes that, you know, doesn't work. But that was the best one I ever had before we have this program where really it's different anyway. But um, 300 Gang says, what are your thoughts on Detroit Series 60 with or with EGR or without? I prefer the 14-liter EGR because I like the low-end power. Now, you can get the low-end power out of a 12.7 with a wastegate, non-wastegated turbo. Um, but I prefer you get a better jaking, jake brake um, activation or whatever uh, with the variable geometry turbo. Yeah. Um, I prefer <clears throat> the later model year in as far as the cab, how the cab is built, 05, 06, 07, how the HVA system works. And if you're going to get that, you're going to get a 14 liter. I have no qualms or issues with EGR. Um, they do have occasionally some issues to overcome, but they're not major issues. Um, so my personal preference is an 05 to 07 Columbia with 14 liter. That's, that's my personal preference based on all these years of driving them. I yeah. wouldn't throw e away e e EGR, e EGR doesn't have to be in the conversation. If you'll keep it, if you'll clean it and keep it clean, mm -hmm. uh, you won't have a problem with it, you know? So, um, now you may, if you're buying this truck and it hasn't, you know, it hasn't been taken care of, you'll, you'll, you'll have to probably clean it up, you know, um, and then run well, the catalyst, you know. So. On this truck that we <clears> got, <throat> it had a new EGR valve and cooler on it when we got it. But I, I took the crossover pipe loose and looked down in the cooler and the cooler was clear. Um, but, you know, I don't even remember what they charge, but it isn't much to have yeah. take the EGR cooler off, run it down to DPF alternatives. They'll clean it out. You put it back on, you run the catalyst and, and you really reduce a lot of your EGR problems. Now, V pods. <clears throat> okay. Just understand that V pods are a pain in the ass. Um, if I ran a, a, a 14 liter, I'm probably going to keep an extra V pod in the, in the bunk, but Sometimes you get them and they're no good out of the box. We had one that was malfunctioning and it was causing some erratic boost issues. I changed it and it was worse than the one that was on it. It no boost, nothing. It wouldn't do anything. I took it back off, put it back in the box, put the old one on, <clears> ordered <throat> another one. And, you know, so it's just uh it's just one of those it's just one of those maintenance items. But again, when you compare it to the difference between a manual clutch and an automatic clutch or the difference between having a CPC and not having a CPC uh, or having a, a $3,000 transmission versus a $9,000 transmission. Boys, I'll take EGR all damn day long. Hell, I'll put sure. an EGR valve on it every year. Sure. For $900. But if you run the, if you run the catalyst, they guarantee it, you know, not yeah. to have to be clean. So, uh, no, I, I, it's, it's not, you know, EGR is nothing like DEF and DPF. Oh, I mean, it's just, no. just, you know, it's manageable. You don't have to delete it. And I would advise you not to delete it because that nope. just causes long-term problems with cracked heads and drop liners and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but just clean it up, run the catalyst and it's, you know, it's fine. You know, we have no problem with them at all. Have you noticed a difference in driver candidate over time? Attitude, work ethic, journalism. Well, number one, you have to understand we haven't hired a truck driver in five years. So I don't, I don't, I'm sure that, I mean, I don't even know if there's a, I, I can't even answer that question, but we're not looking for people who come here for a job. You know, we, the people that come here are coming here for an education for a short period of time, 18 months. And, and then they're going to go on and become successful business people and owner operators. If one of them slips through the crack and comes here and fools us and turns out to be a truck driver, he doesn't stay very long, you know? So, um, have we noticed the improve in our candidates? Yeah. Uh, only because we are doing different things to make that pool get better. And, uh, and, and part of it's been our um, public, um, I guess, expression about what we're looking for. Yeah. You know, we're, we're very specific about what we want and what, and who's going to be here and, and what that person's going to act like and, and perform like, and, and the, the, the understanding is very, very clear. I mean, our, initial interviews usually are not friendly, you know, to a point. No. 
Um, you know, so we have the advantage of having way more driver candidate applicants than we have openings. And so we're, we can be very, very, very like, just like right now, we have more people hired right now, literally than we have trucks. Mm -hmm. Our problem right now is we got to get a couple of trucks together between now and, you know, February, March when these guys want to come on. So I, I'm sure that, that, that can, that situation, I mean, if you, everything you read in the, in the industry is, is that, you know, the, the driver candidates are not, you know, not as good as they, as they were. And again, of course, that's all perspective. It's perspective. You know, I'm, I would think that there's probably a lot of young guys out there that would be better than some of the, uh, the old guys. It just depends on what you're looking for. And, 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 and if you want somebody you can throw the keys at and go make money, that's one thing. But if you want somebody that you want to teach and they do it right and you get some, you know, some, um, you know, enjoyment of sharing and teaching and, and, you know, that, that's a whole different story, but probably not a good person to answer that question because we just don't do it. I mean, it, look, y'all, I mean, I don't know how, how long you've been listening to us, um, uh, Royal wind, but I mean, um, I was ready to leave the industry and, until I found Chris, you know, Chris is who changed my attitude about doing what we do because I finally found somebody that would listen and could use the, you could use with my, my expertise. Um, and so, you know, that's when, you know, I changed the, well, together we changed the way we did it. We've, 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 we've changed it probably three times since we've been together. Mm -hmm. Um, because we've just found ways to improve it. The big thing for us, though, the number one thing for us is the podcast, you know, because if you really want to come here, you've got 187 episodes that are about two hours in length that you can go and just immerse yourself in. And if you like what you hear, you'll call us. If you don't like what you hear, you're not going to call us. And so I, we don't have to get in the business of recruiting. You know, so. I have one and a half years left on my lease of a 2020 Mac. Would it be better keeping it? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't, I'd have to know more information about that. I have to know what you're paying for it. If it's a balloon payment, uh, what it's worth, you know, if it's, if it's not worth what you're having to pay for it, no, I wouldn't. Uh, what's the service history been on it? You know, uh, there's just a lot more things you'd have to talk about there to make that. But it, that is a mathematical decision. That's a math problem right there. You know, are you going to pay more for a truck than it's worth? Um, it, if it's been a really, really good truck and you've had no problem, there's a value to that. Uh, but I, I need, I need to know more information about that. I'm going to go back to Royal's comment. Um, have I, in 25 years, have I noticed a difference in um, attitude, work ethic, and general knowledge of truck drivers in general? Absolutely. Uh, and I blame, I blame the the mega carriers for that. Um, I mean, <clears throat> we have a societal problem. I, you've probably never seen this, Larry, but there's a thing on YouTube called reaction videos where people, it's a video of someone reacting to a video, right? Which that sounds really stupid, but there's something about humans like we watch to watch other people's reactions to things. Mm -hmm. but what I find interesting about it is there will be someone they'll call them a Gen Z or millennial, whatever. And they're reacting to the latest one that went was uh, uh Ram jam, black Betty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like they have no idea that this song exists or they're reacting to journey or they're reacting to like when I was growing up, I was born in the seventies a child in the eighties, a teenager in the nineties, but I was still like, I knew who Frankie Valley was. I knew who Chuck sure. Berry was. Right? But now for whatever reason, there's this very narrow view of time. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it seems like people these days, you would think they would be even more exposed, but they're not, you know? And so, you know, you'll, you'll show them a, a song from the seventies that are like, Oh man, this is awesome. I'm like, how do you, how do you not, how are you alive for 25, right. 25 right. years and not be aware of that? <clears throat> sure. And I see the same thing. Um, we did a video about the OPS and I mentioned, you know, well, you're going to put a gallon of oil in a truck anyway, but then I have to remind myself they didn't exist in the time where it's completely normal to put a gallon of oil in a truck every 8,000 miles. Like sure, that's totally normal. But now mm -hmm. 
Well, no, they'll drive them 20, 30,000 miles and they won't use any oil. The tolerances are so much tighter and the, the way the engine works is so much different now. Um, so there's a disconnect between uh, and that, that leaves them without context. Sure. And so um, I saw this hilarious spoof video of a guy drawing on a paper logbook and he was being very, 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 you know, creative with it, you know, snort number one and then snort number two and snort number three, and then, you know, meet a hoe and, you know, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but I have to remind myself, there are people, there are experienced drivers that have never touched a paper log book. Uh, it's true. You know, <clears throat> have no concept or clue. Or, so, or have or have never had to have to use a map because they've always had a GPS. Yeah, we run that all the time. You know, I called a company today because I've I've got a friend who's his brother in law has just got his license and he wants to find a company that will train with a manual. Yeah, I made a TikTok video. I got a couple of contacts and I called this company down South Point down by Carl's house, and uh, I said, "Do y'all do training?" And he goes, "Well, yeah." And and I said, "Do you train on manuals?" And he was like, "Man." We used to, but we just don't have any left. And of course, you can't find any drivers who know how to drive a uh, a manual. And he, so, of course, you know, God help them when they get a GPS. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, they'll follow that GPS right to the bottom of the ocean. Wonder why they're wet. And he was absolutely. like, you're preaching, you know. <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, to that question, it's not it's not necessarily our candidates, but it is our candidates because we have people that have never touched a map. They've never touched a manual transmission. They've never touched a paper log. Um, and I, it's hard for me to have that concept because I grew up on maps and paper logs, you know, and it, and it's, I have to remind myself that it's not that they're somehow less than, or they're dumb or, you know, they just they are completely disconnected from an industry that used to exist that no longer does. You know, and you so know that, I, I have to, I have to think, you know, my, my father, now, you know, I, you, everybody knows I'm 70. My father, um, died when he was 92 and that's been about, uh, well, I said the year Trump was elected. So what was that? 2016. Yeah. So he's been gone seven years. So he would be 99 if he were living today. My dad grew up in a house with no electricity. As did mine. My dad right. grew up in a house with no plumbing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's one generation ago. You know, my dad, there was no space shuttle. There was no, I, I mean, you, you think what a generation accomplishes mm -hmm. in a generation. And it, it just doesn't take a long time. I mean, and you think about what's, what's going to happen with my son's generation or your kid's generation. How are things going to look, you know, that you have no concept of what that's going to look like, you know? Yeah, I got I got a, 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 a kick out of this. We in part in our in our training, I, I refer to the wax on wax off mm -hmm. um, method of of training, and and I just assumed that everybody knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. well, my wife, who is a master teacher, very very good, you know, educator, taught all of her life. You know, she she said, you know, you probably ought to ch explain that because there's a lot of people that probably have have no idea what you're talking about. So, Chris. You know, uh, he found a clip of the movie. And so now we include the movie in our training because we, I don't, I don't know that anybody knows what the hell we're talking about. You we know? have people in our program today that were not born when Mr. Right. Miyagi <laughs> and Daniel son did, they, you know, <laughs> true, um, true. Yeah. It's my, my dad is 82, the 83. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, but he did not have electric or a, he didn't have indoor plumbing until he married my mom in 1960, you know? And so I guess that's the thing with Gen X. We're, we're the bridge between mm -hmm. old and new, you know, we, yeah. you know, I remember my mom and dad bringing home the first color television in probably 84, you know, yeah. hell that was life changing. We had two antennas. We had one on that hill and one on that hill. <laughs> well, yeah, wanted yeah. To watch the Dukes of hazard. You plug yeah. in this one, and if you wanted to watch whatever, you know, you plug right, in that right. one, you know. And at 11 o'clock, they all went to snow. Yeah. <laughs> the national anthem, and then snow. Yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, and now you've got 700 channels and nothing to watch. Right, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, but, you know, that, that, but again, you look at that, that's not a long amount of time, you know. No. And, um, wow, we've heard it got, we've, we sure veered off the topic. 
Um, our guys are over here talking about drinking and partying. Uh, uh, they're completely off in their own little they, world. They, they are. I don't know. This is just like social hour for them. Well, uh, Mike Barbara, giving us more information about this Max. There's no balloon payments. Been a great truck. He's put every mile on it and has done all the maintenance. I don't know much about Mike. Does Mike even have their own engine anymore? Are they running Volvo motors or Cummins or? I don't know. All, all I, I can tell you, know. all I can tell you, you know, it, if you've got emissions, you got to keep them clean. That's the name yeah. of the game. You know, diesel force cleaning, DPF alternatives, you know, you're, you're, you're so much better off being in front of those problems than behind them. Um, you know, so I would, I would study everything I could study based on whatever engine transmission combination you've got in that Mac. Um, you know, Macs used to be, they were the Cadillac, you know, of the highway where everybody else was the Toyota. Uh, I had an uncle that drove for 50 years and he loved Max because they were just that they, the Max were that level above, you know, for the road tractors. Now you had the old one stack Mac with a window in the back that, you know, you pulled containers and shit with, but you know, those, those Mac road tractors, what do they call it? Something liner, something, something Mac. somebody will tell me, but it had liner in the name. Mm -hmm. I almost said panty liner, but that wasn't it. Um, <laughs> Now, you I don't know, think the Mac guys would appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you know, they, that's a, that's the Freightliner you know guys. You know why the dog on the, on the, on the Mac, the bulldog is facing forward. So two assholes can look at each other. Can look at, <laughs> that's uh, when joke. I worked for Mercedes Benz, we used to talk about the star, star on the hood and a prick under the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. <clears throat> I see many trucks just cruising in the left lane. It drives me crazy. Is that not taught anymore? No, hell no. No. Um, Superliner. Thank you, Sean Chambers. Knew it was coming. Uh, Max Superliner. That was a sweet ass truck. Um, there, I was taught, of course, it wasn't in school and it wasn't by the company. It was the road. I was taught courtesy from other drivers. Because when I started in 1997, no cell phones, no MP3 players, no iPads, no podcasts, you had an AM FM radio and you had CB and the CB was always on. And so, um, when you did something stupid, uh, you heard about it, you found yeah. out about it. Yeah. 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 You found out instantly. Yeah. Um, and so I was taught the courtesy of the highway, the rules of the road from other drivers. Well, now that we have all of these other distractions and things to occupy our time, Hell, I don't, I haven't run CB in a decade, you know, and I'm not going to, cause I'm not going to listen to all that trash. Um, but the, the connection between drivers was severed, you know, the windows are rolled up they got headphones on. Um, uh, yeah. Barbara says the common courtesy and driving equity uh, etiquette is lost to the millennial generation. Um, it, it's just been lost. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's not just oh, driving common courtesy is lost period, you know? Oh yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you, somebody asked about the fuel mileage. So here we go. Okay. So Greg posted his fuel mileage, 7.47, 40 miles, uh, 40 cents per mile, cents per mile. Barb has just posted her 7.61, 39 cents a mile. So you see what I'm talking about? I, we don't have to have any kind of program. They have, they create their own program. You know, everybody wants to be at the top. And we, you know, and that's what we really like that because it just shows that competitive spirit. They understand the value of uh, getting good fuel mileage because that's your number one expense. Mm -hmm. And when you can operate your truck at 39 cents a mile for fuel and fuel surcharge is 48 cents a mile, mm -hmm. you know, that's a free 10 cents, 11 cents that you just add to your line haul, you know? Yep. And, um, that's, that's how we incentivize our people is educate them on what that means. And uh, it's just hard to do with a company driver because they don't, it's of no benefit. To them. I, I'm going, I'm going to be intentionally vague here. Okay. So I'll just All apologize right. in advance. Right. All right. But we, we got some information yesterday from someone who, who posts their numbers as an independent carrier with an authority. They, they, they post their P and L's and um every month and we did a comparison okay and all of this stuff about oh you're 
given land star, blah, 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 blah. Listen, we crushed those numbers with less trucks. All right. Like eight trucks versus 11 trucks. And we crushed those numbers. And this is a guy that really knows what he's doing. Like this isn't some jack leg fly by night. This is a guy that really, really, really knows what he's doing is a super good businessman. And I, the reason I'm being vague is I don't, I don't know the polite and, and etiquette way of, of us to compare these numbers. We've looked at them internally, uh, but holy crap, like y'all, it's not even close. It's not even close. Well, I don't mind you talking about the one. Our fuel cost was half, half, half with more, with, with, um, um, well, what was the, we ran, I was looking at the numbers. Our, 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 our revenue was similar. We did it on, um, 70,000 miles versus 125. Uh, he ran 131,000 with 11 trucks. We ran 70,000 with eight, with eight trucks. Yeah. And our, we were within $10,000 of the gross revenue and our fuel was half. Okay. And then when you looked at, he had interest and he had factoring, um, all, all the things that, that you have when you have your numbers, you know? Yeah. And, it goes, and at, the end, at the end of the day, our net profit was four times. Yeah. Um, was, what this person's it was. It was enormous. And that's after we give Lance our 35% of our money, by the way, all you, all you knuckleheads out there, you know? So that's now, what I've been saying all along. You know, it, it, you don't, you don't understand. Okay. The, the amount of money that we save, I mean, I, Chris, compare the insurance. I didn't even think about the insurance, but it's got to be. And that insurance number, by the way, includes a lot of like my health insurance is in there. And, you know, it's not just truck stuff, you know. So it's um, uh, it's probably not a, you know, a fair comparison, but I'd say it's probably much, much smaller. Um, it's. And again, this is a the, the these numbers that we're comparing to are a real businessman, okay? As legitimate as Larry is a businessman. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all knuckle draggers that like to talk trash in the comment section, there's a reason y'all won't pull your pants down and show us your numbers. Because you you may not admit it, but you know you'll absolutely get crushed. <clears throat> and I mean not in a pretty way. So, um, uh, and, and then, okay, so let's take let's take that and say that I'm going to say 30%. Let's say we did 30% better than he did. Leased to a carrier. You still have to add another calculation for risk because our risk profile compared to his is a whole other level, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the added risk that you take on running under your own numbers versus being leased to a carrier. It's just, it, and, and if you can't, and I know there's a, there's a mathematical calculation for risk, but it's very, very complicated. I know what I want you to do. Cause I've seen, I took a con, a clip from a couple of weeks ago where you went in all in on factoring and I've only seen a couple of comments, but everyone is pointing to this principle and I don't really know the language, the vocabulary. But everybody says, oh, it's only 3%. It's not only 3% because you have to calculate that on an annual percentage rate, right? Right. I don't have the vocabulary for this. I'm hoping that you do. And if you do, take off with it. Well, I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't know the vocabulary for it because I'm not a finance guy, you know, but I mean, I'm sure I could do a little research and come up with it, but it's, it's the same as, 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 as dividing up um, credit card interest. You know, I mean, it, it's not 28%. I mean, you, you see how long it takes to pay a credit card off. You pay the minimums. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like 30 years, you know, well that you would think 28% would be okay. It's 28%, but it's not because it compounds and, and, and it has a compounding effect. So I, I'd have to prepare for that. But, um, uh, but, uh, you, well, you, you, boy, you distracted me. I had a, I had something to say and now I've lost it. Well, um, I'm going to hit this comment while you're thinking about it. Cause this is a good one. One thing I hear a lot is resale value 
is better on long hoods, a way to protect your investment. Okay. Well, if you're new here, this is, we call this the BSE 9,000. This is the bullshit eliminator 9,000 and the BSE 9,000 will get you out of a lot of trouble. Okay. So let's take, for example, uh, that you were going to buy a 2000, seven Freightliner that you could pick up right now for 10 to $15,000. You got it on the road for less than 40 and you put that truck into service and you realize $150,000 a year income. Okay. And you drive that truck for five years. You know what that truck's going to be worth when you're done? About $15,000. Yeah. yeah. What you paid for it. Yeah. Now, if you buy a 2007 379 and it's pretty and it's beautiful and it's long hood and it rides good and it handles great, which it does. It handles better than the Columbia. It rides better than the Columbia. It's prettier than the Columbia. It's a, there's a lot of things that that 379 or that W900 is better than that truck. Now we're going to have to probably pay 30, 35, $40,000 for that Peterbilt. Um, we're probably going to lose 10 to $15,000 a year in fuel. Okay. And we run it the same five years. And if everything was done at the end of the five years, that Peterbilt's probably going to go down, you know, 10 or $15,000 if you've taken really good care about it, but you've lost $50,000 in fuel. Plus all the operating costs for the time you had it. it it's no different than it. It's the same example as tires. People think that, well, why would I want to pay for those expensive tires? If you, you've got to look at the actual costs of what they cost you to operate. You know, that's more important than what the cost of the tires are. Same thing with this. It's not what you're going to get back. It's first of all, what did you invest to begin with? Okay. What's it costing you to run it for the length of time? And then what you get back, it really is, is, is minuscule compared to what it costs you to run it. I mean, you can rationalize this any way you want to, but the bottom line is if you use the calculator, it will always send you the right direction. And if you keep your emotion out of it and you keep bias out of it, you know, then you, 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 it, it's, it's, look, it's not hard. It's not a secret. You know, what we do here is not really difficult. You just have to be open to the fact that common sense is common sense. Okay. Math is math. Science is science. All right. You, you know, you, you can't, you know, you can't mix them up and make it work only when you're, when it's this way for you and not this way when it's, it, it's all the same. If you apply the same rules, the same laws, the same everything else to it. Uh, you come to draw, draw the same conclusion. It's just the emotion gets in the way, you mm -hmm. know, the, what other people think about me. Getting, we talked to a guy today that wants to come in a program. He's a 20 year truck driver. And I warned him, I said, dude, listen, you got to have tough skin to be here because mm -hmm. all those people that you've been driving with for 20 years, they're going to think you fucking went off your, you know, they'll flip your <laughs> lid, you know, uh, you're going to do what, you know, uh, because everything that we do is so different than what the industry does, you know? Uh, and they think it's because we want to be these outcasts. We don't. If if you do, I, I had a I had a dentist in my house last night. Okay, good friend of our family, and we were talking about what what I do. And and I, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, I'm like, you know, because I'm dentists are business. I mean, if you have your own dentist shop or own, your, your business, you know, you know, you have to invest a lot of money to be a dentist. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know, when you're successful as a dentist, you understand business really quickly. Uh, he goes, why is this so weird? Why is this so hard for people to understand? I said, it's not to business people, no. but to truck drivers, they think we're fucking nuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, and that's where I come from. I, I don't, I'm not in the trucking business. I haven't been except for the last 15 years, but um, it, 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 if you just, if you just do the math, if you just do the math, it answers every question, every single question, but you've got to leave the prejudice out of the room. Mm -hmm. You got to leave the, the, you know, the preconceived ideas out of the room and you got to look at it just on a factual basis. Now I know we got taught that during the pandemic, but that was bullshit, you know, because yeah. we had to look and see who, who, uh, who, uh, benefited from that. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, um, I, I have spent a lot of time around the truck shop over the last couple of months and I'm getting ready to spend a lot more time there. Um, and it's funny when the snap on truck pulls in the lot, well, they start shaking and sweating and they start whimpering like a dog, you know, <laughs> here, 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 here. now look, snap on makes some fantastic tool. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Snap on makes, yeah. a, they make a handful of really special <clears throat> tools and I'm probably going to get my hands on at some point, but y'all, I promise you that Harbor freight toolbox that I've been looking at, 
is going to hold my tools just as snug and comfortably in its bosom as yeah. that $11,000 snap on toolbox. Okay. I promise you. Um, it, but, but is there a specialty snap on tool that I'm probably going to buy? Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's this pair of, of, of grippers that gets, uh, hose clamps off. Oh yeah. I'm going to have me one of them. Now they're $65, but I can't get it at Harbor Freight. Okay. Right. So that's one thing I'm going to get on the snap on truck or I'm going to find it used where somebody stole it out of somebody's box and put it on Facebook. Just keep in mind what you're doing. You know, what we try to make people understand is that you, you, you do this for one thing and that's to make money. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can like driving a truck. I can get that. Chris enjoyed doing that thing, but I promise you if Chris had to do that and not make any money, he get tired of driving a truck real quickly. Okay. Oh yeah. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to us. The day the money stops, you're done. I don't care how much you love driving a truck and how much you love looking out the windshield. If it were not for the fact that you make your living doing that, you would not love it. You know, you're, you're, you're making yourself believe that you love it because it lets you allows yourself to do it, but we're doing it for the money. Okay. And if you're going to spend the time and do it for the money, why not make the most you can make? You know, why not be, why not be four times more profitable than the other way of doing it? Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, do I look any worse worn for the, you know, worse for wear but by, by us having old trucks versus so I have new trucks, you know, uh, do we have people that don't come to the program because they don't want to drive an old truck? You know, we, we attract people that do, are doing this for the one reason, and that's to get wealthy, make a profit and then hopefully build wealth for their family and the, and the time they have to work, you know, um, we, we've lost the, the dream in this country about retiring with money, mm -hmm. everybody assumes they're just going to work until they die, you know, because that's how most Americans do it. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, you know, if you start early enough and you're consistent and you, you know, you, I mean, it, it's do that, that, that's still possible. It's, it's not common, but it's possible. Um, but you have to do it by making the most money you can when you make it. Look at the opportunity everybody had in 2020 and 21 to really, really put money in the bank. Oh. What'd they do? Worked half the time. Mm -hmm. Bought a bunch of shit they didn't need. Mm -hmm. You know? To impress and, people and they don't like. To, at the end. And now here we are, two years later, and now... Broke. You know, broke. Desperate broke. Mm -hmm. And then one of... And then one of... I, I love reading these things. Where I'm, my, my rig's for sale. I've decided I'm going to... Bullshit. Your rig's for sale because you can't afford it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why it's for sale. You can no longer operate it, you know? Um, so you, you, you just got to quit, you know, lying to yourself mm -hmm. and, and understand why we do this. And if you're going to do it, why not do it and get the best return on your investment and the best return on your time. And I'm not saying what we do is better than what anybody else does, but I mean, the numbers don't lie. Okay. We didn't ask for this you know, this comparison, it was thrown out and we just looked at it and goes, well, let's just, let's just compare. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we've asked a lot of people, Hey, you think we're crazy about being at Landstar? Get, tell us what you pay for real legitimate P and L. And let's just see. Well, we saw, and we liked what we saw. And, um, you know, I told Chris, I don't want to get too specific about this because I'm not publicly traded. I'm a private company. And, uh, but we did a whole lot better. Okay. A whole lot better with a lot less, you know, and, uh, that's only because we maximize the return on what we do. Now, what was it? What wasn't on that P and L Chris, because we didn't see a balance sheet. It's what he's paying for equipment. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not in there anywhere. Okay. So do you follow what I'm saying there? Yep. All right, here's a great question from Face Shutter. Are those older trucks able to pull 44,000 pound loads up the mountains of West Virginia without issues? Okay. Well, the Detroit, for, the 14 liter Series 60 uh, is uh, 515 to 575 horsepower and torque of 1,850 foot pound. What the does D the age have to do with how much a truck can pull? Well, can you me, help me with that? The DD15. <clears throat> is 455 to 505 horsepower and a torque of 1550 to 1750 foot pound. It's a diesel engine. 
turning a transmission, turning a drive shaft, <clears> turning <throat> a differential. No, there, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. The only difference is the spot where everybody's candy ass sits. That's that. That's the what was that old Dale Earnhardt line? Uh, tie kerosene rags around the ankles to out around your ankles to keep the gnats <laughs> keep from them all right, biting your candy ass. Candy ass, yeah, yeah. That's the only difference between a T680, a 579, or whatever the new Peterbilt numbers are, and a Series 60 Detroit is the candy ass sticks a little bit more uh, in the Series 60 than it does in the newer trucks. That's the only difference. I mean, yeah. uh, Randy Matters on here stirring up shit, oh, by I the see, way. I saw him. <clears throat> I, I see where he's at. <laughs> Talking about candy this, ass. This is the guy that had the, you know, they put the wrong transmission in and the truck was running 300 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, we were and, he's had, and he's had three different sets of injectors. that uh, now, now all of them were fa failed, you know. I think Hopefully he got that resolved. So No, no. Nope. He didn't? He no, didn't. of course not. I think he's just going to run it until it blows the head off of it. I mean, Hell, yeah. can you blame him? You can't no. buy a damn set of injectors that don't leak oil. Leak <laughs> hey, oil. we need uh, Randy. We need a couple of your trailers, okay? Can you spare a couple of trailers? He's got seven. I trailers understand. I understand. Home. You got a fleet of them somewhere. You got tucked away. Now, didn't somebody go over there and pick a bunch of them up? Did I see that on a? No, uh, you know, it was somebody else's. I drove past his place. I he's. I, I, I no, know I, his trailers are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, our pool over there didn't somebody come get a bunch of them yeah yeah somebody helped herself to some trailers so but you know hey landstar people if that trailer's empty and it got a kingpin lock on it somebody gonna get it so when they're gone they're gone you're up a creek. another comment i wanted to see up here uh well everybody's pitching in on three percent might call it 36 percent. that's oh retired super truckers <laughs> Yeah, I remember pulling those same roads with 290 to 350 horsepower. My first truck was a 95 FLD <laughs> with 11-liter Detroit, a Super 10, and 370s. And I assure you, it couldn't pull a greasy string out of a cat's ass. Uh, now, you know. and, I, and I'll tell you something else. There's no, unless you live in West Virginia, there's no requirement that you have to pull, pull freight in West Virginia, yeah. you know? I, I drove a long, I drove, I don't know, 12 years and I only was in West Virginia in a truck once. And, uh, I had enough. That's all I wanted to do. Cause my left wait. leg, my left leg was twice the size of my right leg by the time I got done driving to West Virginia for a day. And you did it with no Jake break. And I did it with no Jake break. That's correct. What are the different classifications <laughs> for flatbed at Landstar? How long does it take to get to the next step? And do they account for previous experience when you're rating? Yes. So, I, I can't tell you exactly what the numbers are, but they're like FB1, SD1. It, it, two, it, it three, starts four. at one and goes to six. Okay. okay. So one through six. One through six. Um, How long does it, it take to get to the next step? This is anecdotal. <coughs> I've always heard. But let's Phil, say, might be, Phil might be on here. You might can answer that. Yeah, but let's say you're a one, okay, which means you can only haul legal. Or maybe you can haul like eight and a half or something like that. <coughs> What I've always heard is that if you have a good relationship with agents, you can get bumped early because Landstar will look at your safety and say, okay, we'll let him pull a two, right? And if you screw up on the two, you're done. Phil says uh, one through oh, seven. One through seven. Okay. Sorry. Um, but, you know, you have to run a certain number of loads at one and then two and then three, but it's kind of fluid, you know, depending on you and your relationships and your service record and your safety. Um, uh, and do they account for previous experience? Yes. We've had people, did we have one guy come in at a three? I think maybe Byron. Yeah. Somebody, somebody came in, uh, somebody came in. I know we've had a couple come in at a two and I think yeah. we had one come in at a three cause he had previous over dimensional experience. Maybe it was Devery. <clears throat> Could have been. Yeah. But somebody, you know, somebody's come in, but yeah, they, they will count your recent experience. Keyword recent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, I mean, it, that's that historical context thing with this horsepower. I mean, um, used to be, you could get out and walk faster than some of these trucks would climb these hills, you know? Um, and, and now 
uh, I would say any truck back to about, well, electronic engines started in 94. I mean, you could competently and easily and efficiently haul freight with just about anything built after 1994. Now, you know, you could use an old mechanical motor, but I hope you like giving money to pilot flying J and, and TA and Petro. Cause that, yeah. you're, that's where most of your money's going to go. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, but again, it's all about, you know, I, I told a guy today in an interview, I said, look, well, Larry, Larry asked the question when I said, why do you want to get in business? And, and everything that he answered with was about something had to do with being an employee. I said, listen, brother, you got to understand if you come here, I don't care about your comfort. I don't care about your convenience. I don't care about what makes you happy. My job is to make you into a business person. I've got to unplug and deactivate the employee driver in you. And I've got to activate the entrepreneur and business operator. And there's things that matter to a company driver that don't matter to a business owner. And there are things that don't, that matter to a business owner that don't matter to a company driver. And that's okay. But it's when you try to bring the company driver stuff into the business is where you get all these people that are whining about somebody else going to fix their problems. Honey, ain't nobody else going to fix your problems. You're going to fix it. Yeah. The, the, the biggest transition that we see people have to make in, in this program. And of course this program prepares you for business, but the, the realization that in, in this industry, that when you go purchase a truck, however you do it, finance it, lease, purchase it, steal it, however you do it. <laughs> At that point in time, you've started a business. I mean, I use it all the time. It's just like you went down the street and built a brick and mortar ice cream store or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, you wouldn't go down there and expect that to give you a check on the first week or the second week or the third week, or maybe the first year, you wouldn't expect to go down and only work half the time. Okay. But people buy a truck. They want to work less. They expect to get paid for everything they do. You know, they, they expect to do all the things they did as an employee, but just be their own boss, you know? And it just doesn't work that way. It will eventually. But listen, there's been a lot of times I've been the guy sweeping the floor in the businesses I've owned because I was the only guy that would do it. Okay. And there's been a lot of businesses where I didn't make it. The only people that got paid were, were, the, were the workers. I didn't because there wasn't enough money to go around. So there's a sacrifice that re, that's required when you go into business. But truck drivers don't want to hear that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. If it doesn't work out, I'm just going to, you know, um, uh, and you have to have, you have to have plans for when things go wrong. You know, I bought a truck, you know, I can make the payment, but the first time something doesn't go right, you're out. You know, that's a, that's a very, very poor business plan. But for whatever reason, because there's so much predatory financing, I'll use, I'll leave it at that in this industry mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it's so easy for people to make that transition as far as having possession of a truck, but not understanding that that is a truck that has to be treated like a business, you know? Uh, and we have, we have a huge problem with trying to, and then, and then, on, and then beyond that, not being a victim, you know, uh, you know, like the guy that waited nine months for a part. I mean, my God, I mean, what do you do every day for nine months while you're waiting for a part? I mean, you know, I saw one guy on here said, well, he went and got a job with another BCL. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's one way of solving it. <clears throat> uh, but you can't allow yourself to be victimized. You know, you have to take control. You have to become a very, very good problem solver. You know, uh, a lot of things that we do here is not convenient for the drivers because that doesn't teach them anything. You know, be, having them involved in solving the problem is how they learn. The good thing here is they don't have to worry about it putting it about, about it making them go bankrupt mm -hmm. because they don't have any financial risk. But they do have the risk of understanding that their, you know, their pay could go down if they make bad mistakes. You know, um, they, you know, they they can um, they can cause a truck to break down. They can, you know, they can do things to hurt their pay, but they're not going to go out, of, you know, not going to put us out of business. So it gets it gives them a chance to kind of act the part and see what those consequences are. And there's a little pain that they suffer because that's how you learn. Uh, but then this transition from 
you being someone that 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 benefits come to you from someone else as opposed to the person that provides the benefits for yourself. You know, I've used this uh, phrase uh, in, in the past, but an employee basically sells themselves to their employer at wholesale and allows the employer to sell them for retail. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you work for somebody, they're paying you just enough to get you to come to work. They're making money off of your labor or your effort. That's how they make business. That's how they stay in business. When you become the employer, you're now not doing that. Okay. You're, you're selling yourself for retail. Uh, but you have to understand what's required there. You can't be the wholesale provider and expect to get retail pricing. And that's the best way I can to, to explain it. And it's, it, it's a complete realization that everything that you've done up to now that you think is important, if you're a truck driver, it's going to become unimportant the day you become a truck owner because those are the skill sets that will not keep you in business, you know. And that's what we do here every day. Somebody asked a question, how long? You have to, to qualify for Landstar, you have to have one year verifiable over, over the road in the last three years. That's the basic qualification for us to be in our program. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get in. You know, uh, that's where we start. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more things here that, you know, obviously you understand that we're very, very particular about who gets in this program because we want you to succeed. And if there's obviously things that we see that maybe, you know, we've had a lot of good people that come here but they just had a new baby or they just got married or, you know, that's not the time to start a business, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll tell you that it's not the right time. You know, uh, we've got a lot of people who came here, found out it wasn't the right time, probably would be back at some point in time when it's right for them. But it's not like changing a job when you come here, it's changing your entire, you know, uh, being literally. So I got two I'm going to hit here. Uh, is Landstar owned by XPO? No, Landstar is a publicly traded company. I hear more horsepower makes you put less pressure on the pedal and use less fuel. Could that be true? Uh, that's one of those things that's kind of, okay? Uh, we have a truck in our fleet right now that uh, we bought for $10,000, a 2006 Freightliner Century. 14 liter Detroit. We have put 373,854 miles on that truck since we've had it. Now we didn't, we didn't realize it when we bought it, we bought it from a truck driver and it was deleted and it had a big turbo on it. And at that time, the, the, our policy was we would bring a truck in. I would get in it, run it for a few weeks, shake it down. Well, I found out climbing fancy gap at, 70 miles an hour with 40,000 pounds in the box and holy crap, this thing's turned up to the moon. Well, it eventually broke a clutch and then it broke a bell housing and we, you know, and we undid all of that. Well, I, before that happened, I put a driver in it and I said, listen, you got to understand this thing's turned up. So your foot is going to decide how good the fuel mileage is. Well, his first week, his fuel mileage was four miles to the gallon. And so we had ourselves a little come to Jesus meeting. And I said, listen, four miles per gallon ain't going to happen. Okay. His, the <clears> next <throat> week, his fuel mileage was over seven. He made a decision. So can you turn a truck up and get better fuel mileage? Technically, yes, but you still have to drive it correctly. Okay. So then we're going to get our friend, the BSC 9000 out, and we're going to say, okay, well, it's going to cost me X number of dollars to turn this truck up. Um, and now I've got all the horsepowers. Can I, will I make my right foot behave in such a way that all of the profits aren't going to go out the tailpipe? And am I unnecessarily putting a burden on my driveline components that isn't necessary by running eight, 900 horsepower? Because um, you know, and you can see this in the drag racing world. They love to turn them things up to 15, 1800 horsepower. And then there's rapid unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> okay. And when that happens, it's a whole lot more expensive than if you would have just slowed down. Now, let me tell you, here's how I climb a hill in a manual transmission. I find out what gear it will climb it with my foot on the floor. Let's say that's 
eighth gear. I'm going to downshift to seventh, and I'm going to hold the throttle at 50%, and I'm going to climb that hill. And I promise you, it's only going to take me five, maybe 10 minutes longer to climb that hill, if that. But I'm going to do it at half throttle while Billy Big Rigger out in the left lane with smoke rolling out the tailpipe is going at it wide open. It's just a decision. You know, well, I remember when I told you about, you know, when we were talking about Pittsburgh Power and how they used to make the Power Box. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never driven one, but I, I can remember Bruce talking about this that you could put the Power Box on one of those cats or any, anything really. Mm -hmm. And if you drive it correctly, it improves your fuel mileage, it mm -hmm. gives you more power. But like the guy said, if you, if you use that power the proper way, Yes, it can give you better fuel mileage by having more power, but you can't abuse it and you can't get all, you know, crazy with it. But I, I can't, I can't vouch for that personally because I never did it. But I remember him saying that. And I remember hearing what you're talking about, a similar kind of thing. It's a little bit, sounds a little bit, you know, uh, backwards, but, but uh, I, I do think that that's probably possible. The question is how disciplined can people be if they have it and not use it? That's the thing. So. Right. Um, we have an agent on here. I don't know That's if you don't right. mind telling us which agency you're, you're with. We'd sure we'd love to give you uh, some plugs. And tying into that right there, the comment there, how do you get a dedicated lane at Landstar? By building a relationship with one of these agents right here. Okay? Yep. That's the only way. Um, and, and it might require you to put, a, you put two or three agents together to get a dedicated. I always did dedicated stuff at Landstar. It wasn't with one agent. You know, I would get, uh, you know, my best dedicated lane. I had two FedEx loads and I had something else. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but it was three different, well, it was two, well, it was, yeah, two different agents actually. Um, but they didn't, you know, they didn't, it, it wasn't by package deal. I made it the package deal that it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about, it's all about how well you are at selling yourself and delivering to your customer. And at Landstar, your customer is the agent. Um, so many people here don't understand that. They have, no, you know, the agent is their enemy. They get on Facebook and they trash them and they talk about them and, you know, and they wonder why they can't, you know, why they can't make it here, you know, because they don't understand that making it here is making friends with the people who have the freight. Mm -hmm. That's not hard to figure out, is it? Y'all, if right. you're leased, if you're leased to a good carrier that provides you with a sales team, I mean that's that that's the thing that makes Landstar worth being it. They you have an un, you have a fourteen hundred salespeople whose job it is is to go find you freight, connect you with freight, and it don't matter if it's XPO or C H Robinson or how, TQL. If they can connect you to someone that can put freight on your trailer and pay you, doesn't matter. We love the direct customers. We take care of the direct customers. The direct customers and drop and hook freight is the reason we have a three dollar and twenty eight cent per mile loaded Shh, mile average. Don't don't tell anybody that, Chris. That's right. secret. Yeah. <clears throat> the that's always been the thing. Y'all got secret freight? No. Yeah. Yeah. We y'all got secret freight. They're disappointed when they come here. We we get some mentoring clients once in a while, and uh, we've some of them have really you know really worked out and have learned a lot. But a lot of them come here, and they're disappointed because they're you mean you getting the freight from the same yeah yeah. Well, how do you make because we you you got to quit fucking off, okay? You got to start being efficient. You got to start you know using your hours and not wasting them, okay? And so that make that making them change to make money with the same freight is a process that they don't want to hear, you know, Oh, well, if it's not, if you don't have that, that, that you know. mm -hmm. uh, or, or they come here for a few days and they find out who our agents are and they go, well, I'm just going to leave and I'm going to call your agents, get your freight. Well, let me tell you how, ask me, ask me how that works out for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we, we really, really, we really, 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 really take care of our customers. Just like you said, I mean, we spent a thousand dollars one time to deliver a load it. I mean, we could have called Landstar and had it repowered. It would have been completely acceptable to everybody except us. Yep. But we were not going to do that because number one, we said we we're going to do it. Number two, we were not going to let that agent down, even though we could have, we could justifiably have done it. 
And that's not the only time we've done that. We've done that several times where we took it upon ourselves to do, do our own problem solving, get the thing resolved. And Landstar never finds out about it. The agent doesn't is, is happy that we're doing it because they didn't have to do it. Well, guess what? Guess how our stock goes up with that agency when that happens. You know, I got a Christmas card today from an agent that we've been working with this year. So um, I can only think of one time and it was recent that we had to use Landstar to repower load. Every other time we've repowered it ourselves, we've either put one of our own trucks on it or we've called a friend. Uh, we've, we've reached out somehow. And um, it works both ways. I mean, the guys that have helped us out, we've helped them out before, mm -hmm. you know? So the, the uh, best example I can give you was, and it was in the heat of the pandemic inflated market and an agent called me and she said, do you have any trucks close to wherever it was somewhere in Maryland, Pennsylvania? And I said, my closest truck's 300 miles away. And she's like, I have a huge problem. I've got this load that's got to get covered. And there was not anything about that load that matched. It wasn't, it didn't meet our daily minimum. It didn't meet our debt. And there was nothing about that load that was desirable by our standards. But I did hit a truck 300 miles to pick up that shitty load. She'll never forget that. And, and by the way, by the way, we did not leverage it. We did not go, well, we, you know, we'll, we'll do it. But we, we just took the load as is. As yep. is. Yeah, mm -hmm. Randy, we got our situation taken care of today. I was trying to get one worked out today. Um, uh, William Haynes is on here. Guys, William Haynes is the fuel mileage king at Blue yep. Ribbon. Okay. This guy got in Rockies. Classic. Okay. The Chris had driven while well, I'm getting about six miles a gallon at best, you know, Haynes gets in it and does almost eight with it. You know, uh, I mean, a uh, guys in, and, and, a, and a, a super, super sharp guy, you know, I understand y'all see his comments. This guy's, you know, we, uh, Hey, we, and we, we love you. We miss you, buddy. Hope everything's going good before you. So, um, but, uh, man, this guy gets it. All right. He understands. Um, can Landstar hide loads from BCOs on the board? Nope. If you've been here one day or you've been here 25 years, you have the same access to the same board. Now, I want you to put yourself in the chair of the agent for a minute, okay? And you have a load that you're a customer and you need it covered. And you can make a phone call. Hey, Chris, do you have a truck close to, yeah, I do. Okay. You want to do this load? Sure. That load never goes on the board because it doesn't need to go on the board because the board is an advertising space. That's all it is. Um, I made a crack the other day, probably got deleted, but I said I wanted to get an agency code just so I could have access to the board to post loads to make people sitting in truck stops lose their minds because they go looking they go looking for loads that they wouldn't haul, that nobody would haul. But they'll go look for a load that pays a dollar a mile just so they can screenshot it and put it on Facebook and virtue signal about it. Right, right. right. <clears throat> Who cares? Who cares? The load board is nothing more than an advertisement to get you to pick up the phone, right? Now, I want you to think about, for in my, I've been here five years. I've been the official fleet manager for about three years, booking five loads a week for anywhere from five to 10 trucks. You know, when I call an agent and I say, hey, I'm calling about this load from Michigan to Texas. Okay, well, let me check on it. And they come back and say, man, sorry, that load's already covered. You know what I do? I go, okay, thanks. And I move on to the next thing. I don't get on Facebook. I don't virtue signal. I'm like, I can't believe that agent posted a load and not called and it was kept. Shut up, you whiny little bitch. <laughs> okay. Move on. The load was covered. Somebody, you know, but they, the, their biggest problem, they say they want to understand, but they really don't. Cause it's super easy to understand why there are loads on the Landstar board that are covered. And why they're still up, even though they've been covered. That's that's one of the easiest things that land started to understand. But they don't want to understand that. Right. They would rather be a narcissistic virtue signaling 
creep, you know, that gets a charge <clears throat> out of, of stirring up low IQ people on Facebook. So anyway. Well, it's all, it's only about them. They don't, you know, if they had their way, there would only be direct freight on the low board. Well, do you know how many loads that that would take off the low board? Do we think the opportunities that would go away from that, you know, if that went, if that happened? And, and, and just like these guys, even the independents that talk about how, why would anybody haul that freight? Well, you know, there might be a reason why somebody hauls it. I mean, what if somebody needed to get home or what, what if it was connected to another load? You know, every load doesn't have to be the home run. You know, sometimes we take a short load to get to the best load. That doesn't, if those loads went away, then you'd just be deadheading to do that. You know, um, again, it's 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 just taking the time to apply common sense and doing the research for yourself instead of just listening to what everybody says. You know, all the lips flapping everywhere. Um, there's lots of times we've taken loads that didn't meet our uh, our uh, minimums because it was a reason that we needed to do it. And it's mm -hmm. certainly and and this will this might be uh, offensive to some people, but uh, it is better to take a load for some money than to deadhead for no money. OK, yeah. that's just a principled thing that, you know, that that stupid people do. OK, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, there's no there's no way you can explain how getting paid a dollar a mile versus nothing is bad. Oh, well, I'll just sit and, and wait for the. Oh, that's fine. And how do you get that day back? How do you get that next day back? You know, the lost the lost opportunity by you sitting there and crossing your arms and, you know, spewing doesn't make sense if you again take the emotion take all the other stuff out of it and look at it just and the, as a math problem and everybody the calculator comes to the same result regardless of who's pushing the keys okay the calculator comes to the same result no matter who's pushing the keys mm -hmm. you just got to get out and push the keys okay you can't assume that you know what it's going to tell you until you actually do it and, you know, here's, again, this is, this is where the, 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 you know, the, the amateurs and the professionals get separated. All right. Because the professional understands it's all about the math. The amateurs got all the, all the emotion involved in it, you know? And so when you get away from that, you start understanding what it takes us to, to be in business and stay in business, you know, you start understanding who it is that you serve and why you serve them and why it's important that you serve them. You know, but everybody wants to be, you know, I've got to make, I'm going to make this. I'm, I'm out here. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a charity. No, 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 no. Well, no, mm -hmm. but you might be a bankrupt non-charity tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right now, as of 10, 27 PM on Friday night, there's 54,781 loads on the board. 3,450 are marked as direct shipper. So those of you that want to, get rid of all the third party freight that you're taking 50,000 loads off the board. Yes, there are duplicates. Yes, blah, blah. Yes. Okay. But here's the thing. You need one. That's it. You need one load. You probably need five for the week out of 50,000. If you'll stop worrying about stuff that doesn't matter and just go find your one load. Just one. That's it. That's all you need. And then you need the next one and the next one and the next one. But y'all spend all your time watching too much television, uh, listening to people that would just lie to your face. Um, worry about yourself. That's all you got to do. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Your business is the only thing that matters to you. So go, go, go mind your business. Go take care of your business. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> well, and quit worrying and quit worrying about what other people think. Okay, that's that's no reason to do anything. Uh, well, you, you don't think that we worry about it too much, do you? No. <clears throat> well, no show next week. Everybody have a great Christmas holiday. Um, we'll 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 see you on New Year's Eve Eve. If you want to join us, we'll be in uh, the great state of West Virginia. Uh, we might be in a great state of inebriation, uh, but that doesn't hurt anything. Usually it helps. Likely. Uh, we'll probably have a guest with us that night that he won't want to do. But, um, you know, it's time. 
And uh, we appreciate you guys, uh, you know, watching all the time, listening, your input. Hope we help some of you. Uh, I know uh, the guy that we interviewed today, I mean, I have to say, you know, he he admitted, he says, first started listening to us. He, he's a long hood guy, mm-hmm. you know, 20 year. But he says, you know what? The more I listen to you, the more it made sense, you know, and I started doing the math and it makes sense. And, you know, it uh, and again, we're not trying to baptize everybody. That's not what we're out here to do. But we're just trying to share with you the things that we have found and we've used and it works, you know, and, and it's just it's just good business. That's all it is. And if you if you if you can adapt it and, and make it work for you, great. Uh, again, I have to say this disclaimer almost every night. We're not trying to change people that have been doing this for a long time and are successful at what they're doing. God bless you. No problem. But the person that's doing this for the first time or thinking about doing it for the first time, we're just giving you an option, an alternative way of looking at doing this, one that is much, much less risky and has a better chance of survival because it's what I've done, you know, all of my life. It's how I built my trucking business, you know, doing the same thing that we teach you to do. The, I did. I built my trucking business on a mileage contract at 92 cents a mile plus fuel surcharge. And fuel was five dollars a gallon, by the way, in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it, it that's how I learned to do this. I I had to do it. I, that was the only way I could survive. Bought the wrong truck. Okay, pay too much for the wrong truck. So it can be done, and um, that's what we're here to do. And I know we step on people's toes once in a while, but uh, sometimes you have to step on people's toes to get their ears to open up. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's just what we like to do. Well, Chris. Yep. It's been fun. We'll see everybody New Year's Eve, Eve. Everybody have a good Christmas and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Guys, go home and be with your families and be safe. Okay. Hug them real good. And we'll talk to you almost next year. Almost.